The Cattlender says it's the last day of summer, and for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, it's their final non-conference game of the year as they get set to welcome the Ball State Cardinals to Lincoln, Nebraska. It's next here on FSN. After a hot start to 2007, the Big Red cooled off against Pac-10 power USC. You know, we got to prove we can still play ball. That, that last week, that this last Saturday, that's not it. But hope is still alive in Lincoln. After this week, we want to be 1-0 as they host Ball State University in week four. They're a disciplined group. They're an aggressive group. Uh, you know, they know how to play together. The streaking Cardinals right into Lincoln, having won two straight. You sleep on this game, these Ball State guys, they'll come in and get after you. They'll bring with them a high-octane offense led by quarterback Nate Davis. And if you give Nate Davis a chance in the pocket to make plays, he'll make a one. He's got a tremendous arm. Who's looking to play spoiler amidst a hostile sea of red. Home crowd, game. 86,000 fans screaming and hollering to see a red. It's, it's huge. He'll run into a black shirt defense that's ready for the challenge. They're a good quality team, you know, solid team. Uh, and we have a challenge ahead of us. And a Husker offense that's looking to light up the Lincoln sky. We just have to come out with our hair fire. We have to come out angry, possessed, and just want to win. Want to really, really, really put a, put a good uh, performance on the road. It's Nebraska and Ball State. And it starts right now. It is a picture perfect day here in Lincoln, Nebraska for college football as the nationally ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers get set to take on the Ball State Cardinals out of the Mid-America Conference. As we welcome you inside Memorial Stadium, Greg Sharp along with former Husker wideout Matt Davis. And now last Saturday, the Huskers entertained the top-ranked team in the country, the USC Trojans, and they were very rude guests coming in here in lane, went on the Cornhuskers, which raised Matt a lot of questions around here this week about the Huskers, their toughness, leadership ability, and some things they've had to address this week. Definitely, and leadership is the number one thing after you go through a loss. And Sam Keller is the leader of this team. You saw Nebraska this week have more physical practices than they've had all season long. And Sam Keller became more of a leader this week. He was more vocal. We had a chance to sit down with him earlier this week and ask him his thoughts on that. The morale is going to be what we make it. You know what I mean? We, got the, we have to have leaders that, that want to step up and lead and, and show that this team's going to go in the right direction. There's going to be no lag or layover from this game because if you sleep on this game, these Ball State guys, they'll come in and get after you. So we're not going to allow that to happen. And uh, the focus and morale is right where it should be. Now, Matt, Sam Keller is a young man who did not play college football last year after the transfer from Arizona State here to Lincoln. And you can kind of see him getting back into a flow after 12 months of not playing college football. Sure, he sat out, and after coming into this season, he knew it was going to take him a little bit of time to get comfortable with these wide receivers. And one of those things has to do with the, the offense being pretty balanced. Sam Keller in the first game threw through a few times in the second game they went more to the, the passing game in the third game he was back into the air 54 times against USC and it looked like he was really becoming more comfortable with his wide receivers at that point well I thought he really hit a flow late in the USC game when the Huskers got a couple of late touchdowns now while he's into a flow so is the other quarterback we're going to see today Nate Davis from Ball State a young guy who came in last year as a true freshman and grabbed the starting job away from a senior quarterback at Ball State true freshman last year started seven games did Nate Davis through 18 touchdown passes in those seven games came in as a sophomore this year started out a little bit slow in the first game but the last two games against Eastern Michigan and Navy 583 yards through the air and seven touchdown passes he might be the best quarterback in the country that no one has heard of, but he has a big arm, Greg, and he's going to put a lot of pressure on Nebraska's defense today. Ball State has won their last three road games, including winning last week at Navy, a very big win for the Cardinals as they get a field goal in overtime to win that game 34-31. They played at Michigan a year ago, so they may not be intimidated, Matt, on playing this big environment here with a sea of red outside of Heroes. No, I don't think they're going to be intimidated at all, but this is their third game on the road in a row, so we'll see 
if fatigue plays a factor at all for Ball State today, but when you have a guy like Nate Davis at quarterback, I think they're going to be pretty confident coming in here today. 285 consecutive sellouts here in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's one of the remarkable records in all of sports. One of the great traditions here in Lincoln is the tunnel walk, which is the area where the team from Nebraska leaves the locker room and makes their way under the bowels of the stadium here, Memorial Stadium, and then out onto the to the uh, field. You were a part of that, Matt, as a player here in Lincoln. It certainly is a great tradition. Now, the location has changed from when you played. They've moved from one end, of, one end zone to the other, but it's certainly a very special moment for players. No doubt. Those guys in the tunnel right there with Coach Callahan, they're starting to hear that crowd. And when those doors open up, you, those guys are going to feel like they're pretty powerful, and it gets you amped up for the first part of the game for sure. But trying to maintain that energy throughout four quarters is really what you have to try to do in any game. And last week against USC, that didn't happen. For Nebraska, they hope to come out here today and have four quarters of intensity. Pretty easy to get up when you play the nation's number one team like the Huskers did a week ago. You have to kind of self-motivate yourself a little bit playing Ball State, a lesser name in college football, though a team that's off to a very good start on their own. But there's some self-motivation involved here. The players have to get themselves ready to play. Sure, Ball State is going to come in here and give Nebraska all they want today. They have nothing to lose. Nebraska, sometimes it's easy to have a lull after a game like last week. They better come out here today and be intense from the start because Ball State has a lot to gain and nothing to lose today. Well, let's uh, let's sit back and watch some of this. You can see the Huskers, they touch the horseshoe as they come out of the locker room, and then they'll make their short way uh, around the corner and then out of the double doors to get out of the stadium. And so we'll, uh, we'll sit back and let you soak in some of this great Husker tradition. football coming up next here on FSN. This is Nebraska. The home of champions. The nation's finest student athletes. Success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. Academic success plays a vital role for Nebraska athletics. The Hall of Distinction honors those student athletes who have achieved both athletic and academic success at Nebraska. The names of nearly 5,000 letter winners who have earned their degrees while competing at the university are engraved in the hall, including a nation-leading number of academic All-Americans. Tradition, teamwork, integrity. Come visit the Hall of Distinction located in the Hewitt Center under the direction of Dennis LeBlanc in West Memorial Stadium. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, last week, the Huskers were very pass-heavy, throwing 54 pass attempts against USC. To tell us more about trying to become more balanced on offense is the third member of our broadcast crew, Stacy Pates. Hey there. Glad to have everybody with us. You know, it's going to be a very busy day for Mr. Lucky. You can see behind me, Cody Glenn is not going to play today, so you're going to see Lucky's number get called a lot. He's going to have to balance this offensive attack. And, you know, as he prepares for each game, nothing changes. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. He comes out, he's ready to play, ready to carry the load. And we're going to tell you also, it's been a very interesting week of practice for Nebraska. We'll tell you about that as the broadcast goes. 
goes on. Now I'm going to send you back upstairs to the booth, guys. All right, Stacy. Bill Callahan in his fourth year at Nebraska, 24 and 16 in his four seasons on the Huskers sideline. Former NFL coach. Uh, had some, also some uh, coaching time of the Big Ten at Illinois. And Ball State's coach also has some ties to Big Ten country. The kick is away. It's a short kick. Courtney Grigsby at the 10. To the 20. To the outside. He's got a lane. And finally thrown down around the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Trey Bice for the Ball State Cardinals. But good field position for Nebraska to start their opening drive of this game. We're delighted you're with us. Here from... Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, where the sun is splashing down on us here today. Sam Keller will trigger this Husker offense. We've talked a lot about him. 61% completion percentage so far this year for Keller for the Big Red. Marlon Lucky will be the one back behind Keller. A couple of the H-backs in motion. Hill and Phillips for Nebraska. First and 10 for their own 37. Back to throw. Finds Lucky in the flat. Good one-on-one -on -one tackle made by Bice for Ball State. Here's a look at the Huskers offensively in this game. And Nebraska's had some injury problems along the front line and they're along their offensive line. As the Big Red will go with Jacob Hickman in place of Andy Christensen, who was injured last week. Running backs and wideouts. Lucky you saw in that first carry. Terrence Nunn with a long streak of consecutive games with catches primary wideout. Now an empty backfield behind Keller on second down and movement up front. The nose tackle touches Brett Byford on the shoulder pads. We'll see if he was drawn off. It'll be on Ball State. So after no gain on first down, Huskers will actually pick up five yards via the penalty on the nose tackle, Troy Davis. Nebraska going to Marlon Lucky out of the backfield on the first play and not only do they use him a lot in the running game but in the passing game as well Sam Keller has done a good job this year of checking down from wide receivers and finding the back out of the backfield that's been Marlon Lucky this year the bunch to the far side of the formation Lucky the one back on second and five Keller straight back throws caught first down as Purify has it across midfield in the Ball State territory at the 47. Pickup of 11 on the play. Bryant Haynes makes the Cardinal tackle. But the Huskers move the sticks for the first time today. Sam Keller looking comfortable in the pocket the last couple of games. Stood in there strong and tall on that play and found Purify for the first down. There's a look at the defensive line for Ball State. Davis, the nose tackle, just 244 pounds. Haynes made the last tackle. He's the leading tackler on this Ball State team. Keller out of the shotgun on first and ten. Back throws. Ball tipped up in the air. Falls incomplete. It'll be second down. A little pressure that time as a corner blitz from Trey Lewis. He deflected the pass. And you know, Matt, we talked yesterday with Bill Callahan about a small defense. What do they do? He says they move guys all over the place. Here's an example of that early on. Sam Keller knew that Ball State was going to bring different looks all the time. See the delivery. There was Lewis to knock it down. When you're undersized. You have to do a lot of different things defensively. Second and ten. Keller, lucky. Left side. Hold. Slam to the turf to the 39 and a gain of eight on the play. Brandon Crawford made the Cardinal tackle. But he'll set up a third and short. Good movement up front of that offensive line. Nice hole up the middle. Little zone block to the left. One cut from Lucky. Get up field, take on a hit. Looks like he maybe could have cut behind another block and gained a few more yards. That'll set up a third and short. Huskers take a couple of wideouts out, bring in some H backs. They'll go with more of a power like formation here on third and short from the Ball State 39. Just underway here in Lincoln. Lawson's the fullback. L lucky the carry, and he, it's going to be close. Well, I'm not sure he got it by the spot. Trey Lewis, the corner, firing in to make that tackle. It's going to be fourth down in about a yard for the Huskers at a decision early here for Coach Callahan. See Lucky go off of the right side here. Lead blocker, Matt Slauson, ends up in the backfield. Lucky took on the contact there. Looks like he's going to be short, but this is four down territory for Nebraska's offense and Bill Callahan. Quinton Castile into the Husker lineup, the true freshman from Texas. 
He will be the tailback. Loss in the fullback. Fourth and one. Castillo gets it. Cuts back. Should have it. Needed a yard. Looks like he gets about two on the play. Haynes and Hill combined on the Ball State tackle. But an early decision for Bill Callahan to go forward on fourth and short. And the big man in the backfield is true freshman Quentin Castillo, and he goes off the right side with Cody Glenn out of the lineup today. You're, you'll see Quentin Castillo quite a bit when you only need a yard and you're 255 pounds in the backfield as a true freshman. You like your chances if you're in Nebraska getting that one yard. First drive of the game. We played over three minutes here in Lincoln. Empty backfield again as Lucky departs. Movement up front. Ball State gets back. Keller with time. Throws it out in the flat. Lucky makes the catch. Knocked down at the 28. A gain of eight. B.J. Hill, the corner on that far side, makes a tackle for Ball State. And for Ball State, they need to get pressure on Sam Keller today. Sam Keller stood in the pocket that time and scanned the entire field. Finally checked down to his running back, Marlon Lucky. Made a throw all the way across the field. A little bit of a dangerous throw. But a nice catch for a running back. Lucky sets up a second and short. High formation this time. Now the Huskers shift that formation. Lucky's the deep back. Gets the handoff. Not much. It'll be third down and short. Good job by Ball State of slanting that play and making the tackle. Drew Duffin makes the stop for the Cardinals. With a smaller defensive line, you'll see a lot of slanting, looping, and Lucky gets to the hole. Maybe was a cut upfield there. Good job by Duffin to close down the hole and wrap him up. Third and two. The bunch is to the far side of the formation for Nebraska. Lucky on a stretch play has a big hole. Lucky to the 10. Touchdown, Nebraska. Once Lucky broke through the initial surge of the line, he was able, with a little misdirection, you'll see J.B. Phillips go across the formation to the right side, and Marlon Lucky goes back to the left and all the way to the end zone, untouched. Good job by the Nebraska offensive line and J.B. Phillips. 28-yard touchdown run for Lucky, his fifth of the season. Alex Henry's PAT is up and good. And Nebraska with an impressive opening drive to get on the board first. 7-0, Nebraska with the lead. Huskers, a nine-play drive. How about balance? Five runs, four passes for the Big Red. For technology to advance as rapidly as it has, technology education must advance even faster. The University of Nebraska has built an institute that will impress even the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies. Because the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies help design the curriculum. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. Who has the power to increase the odds of surviving this? Or this? University of Nebraska Lincoln Research found the solution. Our energy absorbing safer barriers bounce back. Save lives. Inspired research powered by Nebraska. It's technology on the way to a highway near you. That's the power of red. Impressive first drive of the game for Nebraska as they end up going 63 yards in nine plays for the score and well, you love to see a hole like that pop open for the touchdown run. A little back. misdirection. You'll see J.B. Phillips come around this way. Marlon Lucky goes off to the left side after the linebackers follow Phillips the other way. A little kick out block, and nobody was left. And when Marlon Lucky gets into the open field, you're not going to catch him with that 4-3 speed. Dante Love will be deep for Ball State. And it will be Adi Kunalik to kick it off. Young freshman kicker out of Fort Worth, the big leg. And he has really 
almost nullified this new rule change in college football this year with moving the kickoff back five yards to the 30 yard line. Love is a good kick returner for Ball State. Line drive kick. Love will gather it in at the five. Gets to corner, but the Huskers have good coverage. Knock him down at the 23 yard line. Peterson makes the tackle for Nebraska. Nate Davis, we talked about him in the open, 53% completion percentage so far this year, but you really have to like his touchdown to interception ratio. Eight touchdowns, only one pick through the first three games for the Cardinals. He really headlines this offense. Threw for over 300 yards two weeks ago in their victory over Eastern Michigan. We watched some tape on him last night. He's impressive with his arm and with his legs. He has very good feet. Lewis will be the one back behind Davis on first and 10 for the 24. Back to throw Davis. Rolls the pocket. Looking downfield. Nobody open. Now makes a move. And there's those feet we were talking about. He will scramble for a first down and step out of bounds at the 36. And there's a late flag that is thrown from downfield at the very end of the play. And one of the things Nebraska focused on this week after the USC game was missed tackles. And you see it right there. Corey McEwen in the open field against the quarterback, Nate Davis, a play you'd need to, ba to make as a defensive linebacker. And there was Davis getting upfield for a nice gain on first down. Something Ball State wants to do today is get him out of the, the pocket. On the offense. Block in the seven. back on Ball State at the very end, end of the run. run. It was a 13-yard pickup. Down. So this will probably be a spot foul. But you can see it right at the end there as they hit Murillo, the Husker corner who was in pursuit. One of those plays when you go on the road as a team like Ball State comes into Lincoln, Nebraska to play here at Memorial Stadium. One of those plays you just can't make. That's a mental error on Ball State's offense. First and seven. Again, a spot foul from the end of the run. So they have it at their own 27 of the Cardinals. Lewis up the middle. Tough going. Gets a couple to the play. Barry Turner makes a tackle for Nebraska. Now here's how the Cardinals will line up in this game. Two and one. Ball stand on the year. A couple of road wins at Eastern Michigan and Navy. There's their offensive line. Michael Schweitzer is a true freshman at one of the guard spots for Ball State. An excellent running back in McQuayle Lewis. And Dante Love is a wide up to keep an eye on. So is the tight end, Darius Hill. A lot of people think he's an NFL potential. It is second down and five for the Cardinals at their own 29. Davis sets up a screen, has Lewis. Lewis has a first down. McEwen pushes him out of bounds up near the 40-yard line. But the Cardinals able to overcome the push in the back on first down and still get this first down and move the sticks. On third down, nice play call. Let the defensive line rush the quarterback. Offensive line slip through. And if it weren't for Corey McEwen, it'd be an even bigger gainer for Ball State, but well executed. Lewis showed you some speed out of that backfield. He's a little bit of a scat back for them. Maybe the biggest concern on offense for Ball State this year is the offensive line. So you'll see them do a lot of misdirection and different things to compensate for that. Lewis off the right side and tossed down with no game. Barry Turner jumped on his back. Let's look at the Huskers starting 11 on defense. The black shirts as they are known here in Lincoln. Barry Turner Played well last week and will need to continue to develop from one of those end spots for Nebraska. Dominican Sue has played very well. Steinkutter weren't sure if he would play today, but he is out there to start this game. Rude, McEwen, and Octavian are the backers. And there's a look at your secondary. Courtney Grigsby played well against USC last week. No gain on first down. It'll be second and ten for the Cardinals at their own 38. Nearing the midway mark of the first quarter, 7 0 Nebraska. Davis comes a pass, pass complete. Big play inside the Husker 40 yard line as they find Dante Love, their top receiving catcher of the season, down to the 36. Larry Asante makes a stop for Nebraska. And there you see that rocket of an arm, just a strike thrown in there by Nate Davis. Stands tall in the pocket. And a little post route just gets inside the defender there, and Love. You can see pressed his man to the outside, got underneath. Tier Green was able to get the big gainer down the seam. 25-yard pickup for the Cardinals to the Husker 36. Love is in the shotgun. 
He's going to run out of there. They, they get very creative with trying to get the ball to Dante Love as they split Davis out. Sue makes the Husker tackle, but Love is a guy they'll do a lot of different things with. We talked with offensive coordinator Stan Parrish yesterday. He said, yeah, he's a playmaker for us. We try to get him the ball in a lot of ways. There was an example of that. Ball State, their head coach, Brady Hoke, fifth year, was an eight-year assistant at Michigan. We talked about the Big Ten ties for Ball State. But uh, he's also a Ball State grad. He's one of 18 head coaches in Division I who is coaching his alma mater. A loss on that play of three. It'll be second and 13. Frank Edmonds, a true freshman tailback, is back behind Davis. Play action fake. Davis with time now being rushed. Loses the football. That is a fumble, and it's picked up by Nebraska. And a turnover on Ball State. Potter forced the fumble. Sue with a recovery for the Big Red. It looked like it might have been a broken play for Ball State. The wide receiver came in motion. Didn't look like Nate Davis knew exactly what he wanted to do with the ball as he tried to leave the pocket. He didn't see Sue. He didn't feel that pressure, did he? No, he didn't. And there was Lance Brandenburg as well with Sue there to pull him down and force the fumble. First turnover of the game. Now, Ball State came into this game, Matt, with a plus four on the turnover margin on the year. But there's an early mistake for them after having a nice drive, getting the ball into Nebraska territory. And one of the things Nebraska's defense is really focused on is being more attacking getting up the field, try to get some tackles for loss, really put pressure on the other team to get rid of the ball quickly for the quarterback and try to get some tackles on the running backs in the backfield and have a more attacking style defense. Keller in the shotgun. Has time. Over the middle. Lucky with a catch. Slips at the 49. It's a gain, though, of six on first down. Darula makes the stop for Ball State. Once again, plenty of time for Sam Keller to stand in the pocket, scan the field, check down, find his running back, Marlon Lucky. Marlon got upfield for six yards. Keller again out of the shotgun. Again with plenty of time. Checks down, throws out. Lucky. Short gain, if any. There's Trey Bice. Johnny on the spot for the Cardinals. It'll be third down and short for Nebraska. Trey Bice. Ball State secondary is going to be challenged today by Nebraska's passing game. And they're a good open field tackle on a guy that can definitely make you miss in Marlon Lucky. Back to throw Keller. Now comes a rush. He gets hit, goes down. A sack by Cortland Booker. His third of the season for Ball State. That will stop a Husker drive, forcing NU to punt. Booker comes on a blitz right up the middle. Nebraska's offensive line wasn't able to pick it up. Sam Keller could have gotten rid of the ball right there. He didn't, and Booker was there to pull him down. So a three and out. A good stand by Ball State's defense after the turnover by the offense in Nate Davis's fumble. Dan Titchener to boot it away for Nebraska. The six-foot junior averaging 42 yards of punt. B.J. Hill back deep for Ball State. Fair catch called for at the 20, and that's where the Cardinals will take over at this drive. 5.35 on the first quarter. Nebraska leads it in Lincoln. 7-0 over Ball State. We're on a journey of discovery. A journey that is unlocking the secrets of disease at the genetic level. The result? Revolutionary cancer vaccines and research breakthroughs in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And with every discovery, we provide new knowledge to thousands and new hope, one patient at a time. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. Who has the power to harness energy? University of Nebraska-Lincoln Research finds answers to global problems. With leading edge science, we explore renewable energy, reduce the impact of drought, conserve and protect our natural resources. It's clear the University of Nebraska-Lincoln helps keep the planet green. Now that's the power of red. Welcome you back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Just a gorgeous day here in Lincoln for Big 
12 football as the Huskers take on the Ball State Cardinals. Last non-conference game of the year for the Huskers. Next week, Iowa State in to visit. Good look at Brady Hope, the head coach of the Cardinals. Big defensive lineman. He's playing days. Line coach at Michigan. Ended up being the assistant head coach to Lloyd Carr before taking the Ball State head coaching position five years ago. And trying, Matt, to lead this program to their first winning season since 1996. And they're off to a good start with a couple of road wins to begin the year. And we'll look at Nebraska head man Bill Callahan. Well, and for Brady Hope, they feel at Ball State that they have better talent now than they've had the last few years. They finally like feel like they've made the, the turn a little bit. And especially at the skilled positions, they feel like they have playmakers and have guys that can compete really with anybody in the country, including right here in Lincoln with Nebraska. Four wide outs in this formation. Edmonds, the one back with Davis. Back to throw Davis. Throws it down the field as a man, and it's off his shoulder pad. Incomplete. It was Love who broke free again. Beating the coverage of Andre Jones down the near sideline, but it just went off Love's shoulder pad. Now, Matt, I'm looking up in the sky. He might have been looking back into that sun. We're just thinking the same thing, Greg, and he had Jones beat deep and a throw that was right on the money. I don't know how you throw it any better, better if you're Nate Davis. You can see the shadows and where they are in comparison to the player, and there's Love, and it just bounces right off of his shoulder pad. So a potentially big play goes for not for Ball State. They have second and 10 from their own 20. Davis again with a shotgun. Keeps it, throws it out in a flat love, trying to elude a tackle of Brandenburg. He's knocked down at the 24, a gain of four. It'll be third and six. Asante was there, but Brandenburg was the man who held it up. Those were the tackles that last week Nebraska wasn't able to make. Love just runs a little stop route out in the flat. Nebraska in a cover three with the corner. Really retreating. Brandenburg's over there in the flat and gets a hold of one leg and holds on. Brings down a guy that's pretty shifty in the open field in Love. We mentioned the name Andre Jones. He'll get more playing time today because Zach Bowman not in uniform for this game today. Tweaked the hamstring against USC last week. Third and six for Nate Davis in Ball State. Throws it out, pass caught. Does not get out of the first down, now does, is McQuayle Lewis, who gets it up to the 34-yard line, a gain of 10. Philip Dillard makes the Husker tackle. That was dangerous for Lewis because he makes the catch near the first down marker, goes backwards, kind of loops around, and finally does get the first down for Ball State. And you never want to do that, but look at the poise here in the pocket for Nate Davis. On third down, you're on the road. What do you do to step up in the pocket, check down, find your back out of the backfield? He makes a nice run after the catch, and... You feel a little momentum here for Ball State. They get a big three and out after they turn the ball over. If Nebraska goes down and makes it 14-0, all of a sudden you're in a big hole. Instead, they get a stop now, a first down, and they're feeling pretty good about themselves on offense. Davis back to throw. Down the field, throws it out of bounds. Good coverage in the play by Tier Green. It was Darius Hill, the tight end, the intended receiver. And one of the reasons you see Nate Davis and his completion percentage, maybe not as high as he would want it at only 53%, but one of the reasons is he will not throw the ball into coverage and throw interceptions. Good coverage in the secondary by Nebraska, and when it's good coverage, you'll see Nate Davis throw it out of bounds. So Only at, one pick on the season. Look at Kevin Cosgrove, who I'm sure has looked at a lot of tape of Nate Davis this week. Dante Love again lines up in the quarterback spot for Ball State. This is their wide receiver. They used this formation once on their first drive. Love will try to run out of that spot and gets a couple of yards across the 35. Tripped up again by Lance Brandenburg, the senior out of Overland Park, Kansas, and Brandenburg gets up a little gimpy. When every time there's an injury on defense for Nebraska, everyone kind of winces because getting a little thin on the defensive line, especially in the linebacker position. Lance Brandenburg is not a guy that you want to lose, and that was a good play by Brandenburg. If he doesn't make that shoestring tackle, there was a little room for Love up the sideline. It's a gain of two. It'll be third and eight for Ball State at their own 36. Lewis in the backfield with Davis. Davis down the middle. Incomplete. Good tight coverage by Nebraska that time. As Octavian was... Covering up Hill, the tight end, down the middle of the field. So Ball State will need to punt it away. Just a seam route by Hill. And with Octavian in coverage, Nate Davis thought he might get a win out of his tight end there. He put the ball in a pretty good spot. It would have been a one-handed catch for Hill. 
Chris Miller to punt it away for Ball State. He is a preseason Playboy All-American punter, averaging 46 yards a kick. Andre Jones comes up, takes it, looks for some running room, gets shoved back at the 30. There's a flag on the play. Medarius Grant makes the tackle for Ball State. And that's going to be a block in the back on Ricky Tenars. It was right in front of the play and an easy call by the officials. Officials discussing things, but Huskers haven't marked right now at the 29, but that's likely headed back toward the goal line. 7 0, big red with the lead. 3 16 left return. opening Legal quarter. Legal block in the back on the return team, number three. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So the Huskers will start now down around their 20 yard line. Let's get you down to the field again and Stacy Pates. All right, thank you guys very much. Well, when you think of a guy like Zach Bowman, you think of leadership, and here are some reasons why. Last week at practice, you know how the starting defenders come out and practice and wear black jerseys? This guy came out of the locker room wearing a red one. His teammates and some coaches asked him, what are you doing? Why aren't you wearing black? And he said, after we, the way we performed against USC, I don't deserve to wear black. Of course, you're not going to see him doing much today, unfortunately, as he's working his way back from injury. But if you look at the leadership in this team, that's certainly somebody that you want on your roster, someone that's going to step up and say, hey, we didn't do a very good job so I'm showing you right now how important it is to me. All right Stacy Matt that got a lot of play in Lincoln this week and rightfully so that's quite a gesture because it's an incredible honor to get a black shirt here for Nebraska. Zach Bowman not only a good football player but a character guy and one of the captains of this football team and what leadership that shows as Stacy said you go out to practice and you don't wear your black shirt that shows everybody else on the starting defense that hey this is how I feel about it and and a lot of other guys, I think, should have followed Zach Bowman in doing that, too, because not a lot of guys played up to Blackshirt's potential last year, last week. Missed tackles were a, a big part of it, and, and the Huskers worked on being more physical this week in practice, and I think, you know, that sometimes you can really learn something from a loss, and, and hopefully the Huskers were able to do that. Nebraska hadn't been in full pads since the season started, since the first game. They went full pads, obviously, in fall camp, but hadn't been in full pads since the Nevada game. So Bill Callahan came out this week and said, okay, guys, we're going to go full pads and we're going to knock each other around a little bit. Hopefully get that physical mentality back on defense, a little bit more attacking on the defensive side and, and work on the form, the form part of tackling as well. After the penalty, Nebraska will start this drive from their own 14-yard line, leading 7-0 late first quarter. Lucky the deep back behind Sam Keller. Gets the head off, the stretch play, nice hole off that left side, across the 20 to the 21, again a 7, Eddie Burke makes the Ball State tackle. Eddie Burke did not play last week for Ball State. He's their starting free safety at an injury, he's back today. It'll be second and short for the Huskers. Hand off across the 25 for a first down. Is lucky. Nebraska, a couple of straight runs after starting this drive from their own 14. That was just an ISO play with Lucky and Lawson leading the way up the middle. So a couple of runs and a first down and out of the red zone and out to the 26 yard line for Nebraska's offense. Roy Halu is the eye back this time for the Huskers. Another true freshman. He gets the handoff across the 30, diving across the 35, and here a first down for NU. Trey Lewis makes the tackle. That could have been a big gain if Lewis doesn't trip him up, but Halo's a, another young back, Matt, that the Huskers are very excited about. As just a freshman, he's got great speed. When he gets in the open field, he can make a, a man miss for sure. Halo got into the open field. You're right, if that play wasn't made, he could have gone the distance. About nine and a half yard gain on that play. Halo remains in the game for the Big Red on second and short. He gets the handoff. Trying to cut to the outside. He gets knocked down. It will be very close to a first down as B.J. Hill makes a tackle for Ball State. Matt, we have a special guest with us up here in the booth today. 
former Husker great Will Shields, who is being honored here this weekend. And oh, it's great to see you. How are you? Thanks. I'm doing good. Can't complain at all. Are you missing football at all? You know, I miss watching it, but right now I don't miss playing it too much. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. You look like you could still play. He's a big man, isn't he? It's, well, yeah. it's only been a few months since I've had a, a uniform on. So, Kel uh, Keller in the backfield gets a loss of a couple of yards on that play. Well, what an honor for you to be back here this weekend, and I'm sure it's special for you to come back to Lincoln. It is, especially when you know you get honored. Wow, you get honored and get a chance to, uh, you know, be a part of the Corn Husker organization and actually come back and they honor you as far as uh, putting you in the Hall of Fame. It's it's really big. You were here when Nebraska was primarily a running team. Nebraska's changing their schemes a little bit, a little bit different feel for Husker football, huh? They're adding a little to it, and that's really nice. Uh, I think once they get some more uh, premier wide receivers in, it'll be even better, especially for the running backs. Lucky up the middle, a big hole that time. That offensive line doing a nice job there. Near a first down. We've got a little footage of you, not from your Chiefs days, but from right here in Lincoln. There's number 75. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was when I was a lot smaller. <laughs> well, what's the difference it, when you go from Nebraska, where it's mainly a running style offense, and then you go to the NFL, and for these linemen here now, how different is it, just from a mentality perspective, in the passing, in, the, in run passing, blocking, or, or pass blocking, or running blocking? Well, it, it becomes more of a controlled aggressiveness, and, and when you're used to running all the time, you have all your weight forward. You're always pushing on somebody. Where when you go in the passing game, you have to actually sit back and control the guy from from being on your heels compared to actually just trying to bully him and, and push him out of the way. So that makes a big difference. Castillo gets the first down on third and short for Nebraska. They have the football up near their 50-yard line. There may be about one play left in this first quarter. Nebraska leads 7-0. We're talking with former Husker All-American Will Shields being honored here this weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's just still an impressive sight, Will, to look out and see all that red out in the stadium, isn't it? Well, this is really what's what's unique is the rebuild of the stadium and all the work that they've done since I was here is amazing. Well, it's great to have you back in Lincoln. Good luck with things. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Will Shields, former Nebraska All-America. We've hit the end of the first quarter. 7 of the Nebraska with the lead over Ball State. We're back with the second quarter in Lincoln next on FSM. Thanks, Will. Nice to see you. into games was a lot different for me you know operating the offense in a game management setting um, you know obviously took me you know maybe a little bit to get to get into it and uh, you know I think maybe that's natural maybe it's not but you know I'm a rhythm guy and if once I get rolling everything everything falls into place and I, I feel very good about where I'm at and where I'm at, where I'm improving and Matt it is it's a totally different animal you practice and practice and practice but when the lights come on Another team across the field staring at you. It's a different deal. Yeah, it's totally different. And, and like Sam Keller said, he, he's a rhythm guy. And so it's taken him a couple of games. And you can see within games when he gets even in single drives where he completes a couple passes, he really starts to get into a rhythm. You can see him playing with more confidence. And you can do it all you want in the on the practice field. But when you come out here and there's 86,000 people, or if you're on the road, and you're going against the crowd, it's just way different. The speed of the game picks up, and you can see him getting more comfortable as the season progresses. First and 10 NU, ball midfield, play action fake. Keller in the flat, incomplete, trying to hit Hunter T. Fatiller. It'll be second down and 10. We were talking about balance in the offense. In that first quarter, Huskers had 19 snaps, 13 rushes, six passes, probably what Coach Callahan would have hoped to have had. Sure, and you set up that passing game with the run, and Nebraska's done a good job of trying to do that today, opening up there with a pass, looking for France Hardy down the middle. Wasn't there, so now a second and 10 for Sam Keller in this offense. End off, Lucky. Flag comes out, Lucky gets about five yards in the play, but the ball carrier. umpire Down threw the flag, which would lead you to believe a holding call could be coming up. Eddie Burke, the free safety, makes the tackle. And if it is a hold, you'd like to think Nebraska's offensive line wouldn't have to do that today against an undersized Ball State defensive line. And you see the call is holding on Nebraska. You should see it right in the middle of the field. 
Just a little tackle right there. Grabbed the heel, looked like Matt Slauson. He was able to grab the heel and bring his man down. He didn't make the play. No. Nope. Prevented, <laughs> prevented him from making the play, didn't he? <laughs> so a 10 yard penalty on Nebraska. Now they'll have second and 20 from their own 40. Halu back in there at the IBAC spot for the Huskers. Freshman from Danville, California. Straight back in the pocket. Keller holds, rolls, hit, dropped. Brandon Crawford makes the tackle, a five yard loss, a sack, the second sack of the game for Ball State. You'll see good protection from Nebraska's offense, only a three man defensive rush for Ball State as they end up dropping one into coverage. So just a three man rush, Sam steps up in the pocket, probably should have just thrown the ball away right there. Instead he tries to scramble out and going to your left as a quarterback is always tough. Crawford did a good job of rallying and finding him and getting another five yard loss and now a third and what 25 third and 25 for the Huskers they lose the back in the backfield with Keller in the shotgun Keller steps up eludes the rush throws it downfield pass caught short of the first down as Peterson makes the catch at the 45 of Ball State so they get 20 of the 25 Trey Lewis makes the Ball State tackle See just a deep square in here by Todd Peterson coming across the field. Nice strong throw by Sam Keller too, but Ball State knowing Nebraska's in a third and 25 situation, let him catch anything in front of him, make the play and force a punt. 20 yard pickup if he throws the ball away on second down and avoids the five yard sack, that play might have been enough for a first down. Sure, that's third and 25 is a tall order. Titchener to boot it away, a second punt of the day for Nebraska. Trying to pin Ball State deep here. Angles it to the near side. Huskers are down there trying to stop it from getting in the end zone and they cannot do it. So it'll come back out to the 20 yard line of the touchback. Early second quarter, 7 0 Nebraska with the lead over Ball State. Boy, really close, only a couple yards. Funny how that oblong ball doesn't always do exactly what you want it to do. Nebraska's not played many Mac schools in their history. In fact, this is the first time that Ball State and Nebraska have met on the football field. This is only the fourth game Nebraska's had against a Mac team. The last team that they played from that league was Akron back in the late 90s. 97, I believe, Greg, the opener. Lewis gets the handoff. Good cut back to the near side, up the field. Octavian rides him down at about the 29, a gain of nearly nine on first down for Ball State. Well, they give you a lot of wrinkles with the Cardinals offensively. You'll see a lot of misdirection today. You see guys running all sorts of different directions, different sets. This is just a little draw play. Nate Davis trying to get out, make a block for his running back. Steve Octavian ran him down from behind for Nebraska. Lewis again in the backfield behind Davis on second and short. He gets the pitch. Has a first down. Collared at about the 32 by Indomitian Sue. Who's really played good football. I think of the front four, I would say Sue probably has graded out the best of the first three games. You see the strength. He's just able to grab Lewis and pull him down from behind. And Sue has probably played the best. And I think going into the season, Nebraska felt like Sue was going to have a big season. Only a sophomore, but big size. And really holds down the fort in the middle for the Nebraska defense. Frank Edmonds, the true tailback in the lineup for Ball State. Davis rolls the pocket, guns in and out of the hands of Love on the far sideline. Matt, even though that was an incompleted pass, that was an impressive throw for Davis who does a reverse pivot. What, look at his arm strength on this throw. Well, going to your left as a quarterback, always a tougher throw, but you can see how he got his hips and shoulders turned to the target. Threw a pretty good ball. That's the second drop today for Love. And going into the game for Ball State, they knew they had to have a big game out of him and already a couple of drops. The, the first drop would have been a 40 or 50 yard gainer. Second and 10 for the Cardinals at their own 32. Edmonds, not much. It'll be third and long. Kevin Dixon, the Garden City Junior College transfer for Nebraska makes the tackle. Nice to see. For Nebraska, their defensive line playing better today. Obviously after last week, this entire week was all the skepticism around the defensive line and why there were 
Such big gaping holes in that line as USC ran right up the middle. Numerous times was able to run over the Nebraska Blackshirts. Third and nine for Ball State at their own 33. Crowd making some noise. Again, Davis rolls to the left side down the field. Pass is caught near midfield for a first down for Ball State. Darius Hill, the tight end from Blue Springs, Missouri, makes the catch. And when you talk about an NFL potential quarterback, you, you ask yourself, can he make all the throws? Well, watch this one. Going to your left under pressure. And this isn't a bullet, this is a touch pass right up over the top of the defense. And he just drops it in there, a little teardrop. Hill's able to go up and grab it with four to Nebraska defenders around him. 19-yard pickup of the play for a first down for the Cardinals, who have it now in Husker territory at the 48. Davis back in the pocket. Down the field as a man down there. It's incomplete. Trying to hit Joe Everett, who got his hands on it, but just couldn't haul it in around the 20-yard line. Ball State is going to challenge this Nebraska secondary today. When you have a guy like Nate Davis in the pocket, able to throw it the way he is. This is just a little seam route right up the middle, trying to split the safety and the corner in the deep cover three. Tierra Green comes over and makes the hit. A pretty good throw from Nate Davis. Not getting a lot of help from his wide receiver so far in this game. Second and 10 for the Cardinals. Their own 48. 10 38 left to go first half 7 nothing Nebraska screen pass incomplete trying to hit Lewis out the flat it'll be third down and 10 Huskers spread that play out just enough to make it difficult for Lewis to see the throw a little different look up front for Nebraska on that play a couple of linebackers up on the line of scrimmage just gave Nate Davis something else to think about didn't really have time to let that play develop before he got rid of it looking for Lewis in the flat for the screen play Huskers rotate some new bodies up front defensively as Sue and Steinkluder come out of the lineup. Third and ten. Ball stayed at the Nebraska 48. Davis in the shotgun. Gets the snap. Safety blitz picked up. Davis has time. Flips it out. First down. Ball State down the sideline. Getting shoved out of bounds is Dante Love. A pickup of 21 yards on the play. Murillo knocks him out of bounds at the Nebraska 27. Two-man blitz up the middle for Nebraska, and Paul State does a good job of picking it up. See Love run all the way across the formation. And when you're in a blitz like Nebraska was, you don't expect Nate Davis to have time to step up in the pocket, and Love have the ability to come all the way across the field. But because they picked up the blitz nicely, they were able to get that play, and get him into, into the open field where Love is pretty dangerous. McQuail Lewis off the right side, picking his way down to the 20-yard line. Again, a seven at first down. It'll be second and three, a pretty impressive drive here for Ball State. Rude and Murillo make the Husker tackle. Just a regular toss sweep to the right side with a pulling guard for Ball State. Get three men out in front of Lewis and one cut up field. He's able to get seven yards. Too big a gain if you're playing for this Nebraska defense to give up seven yards on the ground on first down to Ball State. Second and three, Franks Edmonds, the freshman tailback. Play action fake, Davis has a man open down the field, pass caught, touchdown Ball State. Again, it was Darius Hill, the tight end, who makes a spinning catch inside the five, and the Cardinals are to within a point here in Lincoln. And Hill was running wide open. For Davis, he was under pressure, but Delivered another good pass. And Hill makes his third touchdown catch of the season in the 16th of his career. As Jake Hogue will try to tie this game up here in Lincoln with 9.46 left in the first half. Snap down, kick is up. We are tied. 7 7, an 80 yard drive for the Cardinals. On 10 plays to tie this game up here in Lincoln. Boy, pretty impressive drive and two third down plays. There were big pickups for Ball State. A nice drive by Nate Davis and the rest of this Ball State offense. 7-7, Cardinals and Huskers. We're back with the Cardinals kick. A 20-yard touchdown pass from Davis to Hill is not in the score in Lincoln. This is Nebraska. The home of G. 
champion. The nation's finest student athletes. Success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. Who has the power to harness energy? The University of Nebraska Lincoln Research finds answers to global problems. With leading edge science, we explore renewable energy, reduce the impact of drought, conserve and protect our natural resources. It's clear. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln helps keep the planet green. Now that's the power of red. Very impressive Ball State drive. 80 yards, 10 plays. They used just under three minutes to tie the game up as Davis connects with Darius Hill. Their Cardinals very talented tight end. As Davis made a lot of plays on that drive, Matt, to get this game square. Well, and when you're nervous about your quarterback not being protected, you roll him out sometimes. This time, just a little play action fake and a soft spot in the zone right between the corner and deep safety. Looks like Nebraska might be playing a three deep cover three. Just a soft spot right there. Hill kind of sat down. Nice throw by Davis. He's definitely gaining confidence as the game progresses here. Kick is away. Andre Jones will retrieve it at about the three, puts the brakes on to stay in bounds and up the far boundary and knocked to the turf at about the 26 yard line as Trey Bice makes the stop for Ball State. Well, we've mentioned it, Ball State playing their third straight game on the road. They have won three straight road games. They've won seven of their last 10. I think Matt, that's a huge sign of turning a program when you can go win on the road. I think that shows your program is making strides seven of the last ten on the road. It's a pretty good sign for Ball State. Especially when you have your leader back on offense. Nate Davis, I mean, you feel more comfortable going on the road. He's only 20 years old. Lucky, tiptoes up to the 29. Gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. But now for Nebraska. This offense has to respond. Seven to seven, you're in a dog fight, you're at home. Kind of a sandwich game, one of those, oh boy, we're getting ready for conference season. We just lost to USC. Let's just take care of business today. Well, you still have to go out and get it done. Lucky again across the 30. Game of about two, it'll be third and five here for the Huskers. As Darula makes the tackle for Ball State. A couple of quick runs up the middle. Sets up a third and medium. The time where a guy like Sam Keller has to make a play for this offense. They give him time. He has to find somebody and move the chains. As an offense, you don't want to go three and out after Ball State's offense just had a 10 play drive against your defense. You want to let them sit on the sidelines and get a little air. Twins to the far side of the formation. Lucky the one back. Keller sets, throws, incomplete. Got hit right after he let go of the football, purify the intended receiver, and there's your three and out for the Huskers. And Dan Titchener will have to come in and boot it away with 8.29 to go in the first half, a 7-7 tie. You can see the frustration on Sam Keller's face. Bill Callahan not happy about something. Kitchener stands at his own 16. B.J. Hill deep for the Cardinals. Titchener, good punt. High, booming kick. Hill weighs for the fair catch at the 24. That's where Ball State will have it. 8-21 left to go first half. Nebraska 7, Ball State 7. We've got a good one going on here in Lincoln. Academic success plays a vital role for Nebraska athletics. The Hall of Distinction honors those student athletes who have achieved both athletic and academic success at Nebraska. Guys have proven leading number of academic All-Americans. Tradition, teamwork, integrity. Come visit the Hall of Distinction located in the Hewitt Center under the direction of Dennis LeBlanc in West Memorial Stadium. 
your tickets on the Husker Express. We're all on board. Are you? Get on the Husker Express. We need you on board. Get on board the Husker Express. Nebraska basketball. Woo! I'm on board. Are you? We need you on board. Nebraska basketball. Get on board. Woo! We welcome you back to Lincoln, Nebraska. 7-7 tie, Huskers and Cardinals of Ball State. And we're getting more and more impressed with Nate Davis, Matt, the quarterback of Ball State. Well, as only a sophomore, I said he's only 20 years old. He comes on the road in here with 86,000 fans. It doesn't look like it's bothering him a whole lot. He's had a couple of drops. He's already thrown for 109 yards. And with a couple of balls that were dropped, he'd be over 150 yards already as wide receivers have done a good job. And maybe what's most impressive about this offense so far is the offensive line. That was the big question mark for this team offensively. And so far, Nebraska hasn't been able to get really any pressure on Nate Davis, but their coaching staff also doing a good job of rolling him out, getting him out of the pocket, letting him you know, get some time for his wide receivers to make plays. Nebraska's black shirt defense needs to come up and Put a stop sign up on this drive here. Davis back again with time. Lost it downfield as a man out there. Passes in and out of the hands of Love along the far sideline. That is his <laughs> second drop of a deep ball from Nate Davis. It's been right on the money. Would have been another, what, 50, 55 yards. And Nate Davis, he's just kind of shaking his head right now. I don't think we can blame this one on the sun for Love since they're going the other direction, Greg. <laughs> Once again, it was Andre Jones beat deep right in his hands. I don't know if you can throw it any better. You see the reaction from Nate Davis. Can't believe it. It's the third drop for Love today. Lewis, the one back behind Davis, gets the pitch on second and 10. He cuts to the outside, out of bounds at around the 29, a gain of four, as Ricky Thanars over there to usher him out of bounds. And even at second and 10, Ball State will put the ball on the ground, set up a third and medium, third and manageable distance. You see this offense right now. I think they believe they can move the football. Third and seven from the 27 for Ball State. Nebraska looking for a three and out. Davis guns, love catch, first down. Up to the 40. Knocked down at the 41-yard line. Asante and Thanars there to make the tackle for the Huskers. But again, no pressure on Davis in the backfield. Davis certainly has played well early in this game for Ball State. Well, they're doing a lot with him. They're rolling him out. He's able to throw it down the field, going to his left. He has all the throws, all the throws that you ask a quarterback to make, little touch passes. And on play action, he's able to find a man with a bullet down the middle, squeeze it in between two defenders. A good start for the sophomore quarterback. Lewis, no gain. Shoved back, Barry Turner, Steve Octavian there for the Huskers. It'll be second down. Might have lost a half yard on the play. Still caught it second and 10. 7.48 left, first half. 7-7 seven, seven tie here in Lincoln. And at the top, Greg, we talked about leadership. After a loss, what's the most important thing? It's leadership. And in the locker room, you have to have that from players. In this situation, there's only so much a coach can do and say. You have to have guys in the locker room to step up. And in this situation, the situation this defense is in right now, that's where you need a leader, in the huddle. A guy out there right now to make a big play and change momentum of this football game. Play action, Davis being rushed, sheds off the tackle, looks downfield, guns it deep downfield as a man down there, and it is nearly picked off. As Ricky, or no, that was Courtney Grigsby, nearly had a pick at the 15-yard line. He knocks it away, and it does stop the drive. What a nice defensive play. The pressure first came from Zach Potter. He wasn't able to find Nate Davis. He threw it downfield, and look at that athleticism oh. there from Courtney Grigsby. Going up against a bigger wide receiver. Probably should have been a pick. But nonetheless, he knocked it down, now forces a third and 10. We talked to Courtney yesterday. He's one of those seniors that you would look for some leadership if you're Nebraska in this situation. Davis in the shotgun. 
Here comes the blitz. He eludes the rush. Throws. And the pass is caught. Held on. What a grab made by Joe Everett. Asante nailed him when the ball got there, but there's a nice catch by Everett to keep the drive alive for Ball State. First, the pressure comes from Nebraska's defense. And watch Nate Davis just step up into the pocket. Ricky Tenaris looks like he has him. He steps up into the pocket and throws a rocket. And you will not see a better catch than this one right here, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Asante comes up, boom, right in the back. But Everett able to hold on and get the first down. And, and lo looks like Asante's Asante down. might still be down. He is injured on that play. He delivered the big blow. We've talked about some drops from Ball State. There was an incredible grab by Everett to one, keep the drive alive and move the sticks and get the ball into Nebraska territory as you take a look at it again. See, Asante there delivered a nice hit. Maybe it was a shoulder. Maybe just got his bell rung a little bit. Going off under his own power now. That's a nice hit, but just a really good play by a wide receiver that knew he was going to take a shot. When you're running a deep dig like that, and you know Nebraska has two deep safeties and a cover two. One of them's going to come up and try to take your head off. And when it's a high ball, it's even worse. Asante tried to cut him in half, but Everett held on. Matt, we're nearing the end of non-conference play for everybody in the Big 12 Conference. And certainly has been some interesting results so far. Oklahoma roll has been rolling. They won last night, beating Tulsa handily. Texas plays later today against Rice. A&M, though, got beat the other day. We need to update that. A&M actually is 3-1. They lost to Miami the other night. And there's the Huskers at 2-1. It's going to be a wild year in the Big 12 in the coming weeks. Well, it is for sure. And I think it's safe to say that so far this year for the Big 12, it's been disappointing. And you have Oklahoma at the top, who everyone considers to be a top three, four, five team in the country with their performances so far. But after that, in the non-league, the Big 12 has just been average. And a schedule that looked like it was pretty daunting at the beginning of the year for Nebraska doesn't look quite as daunting now when you look at Oklahoma State and the way that they played, Texas A&M and the way that they looked a couple of nights ago. Now this schedule looks like there's a lot of wins out there for this Nebraska team if they go out and play well. Inside of seven minutes left first half, a 7-7 tie. Ball State on the move. Lewis gets the pitch. Looking for running room. Good job of the Husker defense of stretching that play out. McEwen touches him out of bounds at the 46. It'll be no gain, second and 10. Boy, really tough to run a sweep into the short side of the field. You see Nebraska's defense just really stretch the play out. Corey McEwen does a good job sorting his way through all the congestion and getting there to throw him out of bounds. It'll be a loss of a yard. It'll be second and 11. Lewis remains in the backfield. Davis will shift to the shotgun. With the Cardinals having the ball at the Husker 47. Lewis, it's a reverse. Love trying to cut to the outside. Does. 45. Knocked out of bounds. Again by McEwen at the 41 yard line. A gain of six on the play. It'll be third down and five for Ball State. Another way they like to get Dante Love the ball is on a double reverse. He's in the left slot. They run a toss sweep towards him. He just goes right around the play to the backside. Nebraska's there to make the play, but you see how tough it is to tackle a guy with the quickness of love in the open field. Even though you saw the missed tackle there by Octavian, that's a, that's a lot to ask to tackle a guy like Love in the open field. Davis back with time. Nobody open. Now finds a man in the flat. It's a first down as he hits Madarius Grant who twists his way to the 31-yard line, a gain of 10, as Brian Wilson makes the tackle for Nebraska. Once again, plenty of time for Nate Davis as he steps up in the pocket. Not enough pressure from Nebraska. And as you look at third downs right now, how about this? Six out of seven on third downs for Ball State in this game so far. And Love comes across the formation, just trying to find a soft spot in that zone, sits down in the middle of the field. In between a couple of linebackers, Davis found it, but it's all about the pressure. Nebraska has to start getting pressure on Nate Davis. Davis back, steps up, he might run. He does, gets about a yard and a half on the play. Ricky Tenars makes a tackle for Nebraska. He came on the safety blitz 
off the top side of the screen. Ball State picked it up. There was nobody open downfield. Good job by the secondary for Nebraska on that play. You know, Brady Hoke's club last week against Navy, Matt, accumulated 539 yards of offense. And Navy's a good, solid team that probably will make their way to a bowl game by the end of the year. So Ball State racked up over 500 yards against Navy. They're nearing the 200-yard mark here in the first half against the Huskers. Edmonds, the one back in the backfield with Davis on second down and eight. Edmonds gets the carry and gets oh. slammed backwards. Big hit by Philip Dillard. And you're going to start to see more of Philip Dillard as the year goes along. He was out last year with a broken leg. Came back this year, really wanted to assert himself. Of course, Corey McEwen is in there at the middle linebacker position as well. But look at that form. Get down and drive through the man. The pad level was there for Dillard. Dillard, a solid hit and maybe a spark this defense needed right now, forcing a third and long. Timeout called by Nate Davis on third and seven. 4.51 left first half, a 7-7 tie here in Lincoln. As the Cardinals have come to play here today, giving Nebraska a heck of a fight. Nebraska a 22-point favorite in this game, but you knew with Ball State's win over Navy last week, this was going to be a formidable team for the Huskers to play. Sure, and I think Nebraska saw that on film. And as you look at this Ball State team, Offensively, they have a lot of weapons. When you have a quarterback like Nate Davis, you know going in anywhere you go, you're going to have an opportunity to move the football, and they've shown that already today. We talked earlier in the game with one Husker Hall of Famer, Will Shield. Stacy Pates is standing by with another Husker great. Stacy. All right. Obviously, Stacy not quite hearing what her chat was about. We'll get back down there in just a moment. Ball State staring at a third and seven here from the Nebraska 28-yard line. Late first half. When you look at it, most football games, you can point to three, four, five, six plays throughout the game that really decide it for the most part. And this could be one of those plays right here. As you look at under five minutes to go in the first half, you're all tied up at seven, and right now on the borderline, could Ball State kick a field goal right now or not if they don't get this first down? But so far, how about six out of seven on third down? So Nebraska right now needs this crowd, and they need a big play out of their defense. Let's see what Ball State comes up with. Third and seven for the Husker, 28. Lewis, the one back behind Davis. Brown making some noise here in Lincoln. You see the two stacked wide receivers at the top. That can cause confusion for defensive secondary. Back to throw Davis. Lofts it down the field toward the end zone. Incomplete. Good coverage by Nebraska. Trying to hit Hill the tight end. And it will set up fourth down and a field goal situation here for Ball State. Well, Bo Root is in coverage. And Hill, who already has a touchdown reception, Goes down in towards the pylon. Got a little help from Tierra Green. Good coverage by Nebraska. But once again, Nate Davis, you know, he, th he threw that ball in a place where it wasn't going to be picked. You know, we, we talked about it. Only one interception on the season. He puts it normally where only his man can make a play. Jake Hogue, 45-yard field goal attempt. He's only one of four from this distance this year. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And Ball State has the lead. That is a new career long for freshman Jake Hogue of Ball State. A 45-yard kick to give the Cardinals a 10-7 lead here in Lincoln with 4.41 left to go in the first half. Let's get you back down on the sidelines and Stacy Pates. All right, I think we got we go we got us going now. I can hear me now. Now it's more important to hear from Tyrone Leggett. Of course, he was a three-year letter winner here for Nebraska. Helped lead the team to an Orange Bowl your senior year. What was it like having your name called again when you walked out on this field today? Oh, it was just wonderful, man. I mean, it's been a long time since that name was called out here as a Husker. Uh, just exciting feeling to have my family here uh, to actually see that. You know, there's so much pride when you think about this program. How tough is it for you as a former player having such success to see them struggle a little bit even here today? Uh, it, it's tough, but I mean, uh, they're just going through some, uh, I guess, growing pains, you know. They will get back on track and just continue to get back to fundamentals. I mean, just get uh, make uh, themselves student of the game. 
but more importantly, you see them, they're going to rally together. This is a team known for coming together through adversity. I see a lot of great things, uh, good athletes and good player and good coaching. They just got to pull it all together and make it work for them. Speaking of adversity, you actually own a construction company in New Orleans. You were drafted by the Saints in 1992. How have you seen that community rally around its football team that's now making it back into town just like this community rallies around its team? Absolutely. Uh, that's truly been an inspiration uh, to the uh, people that live there, having the Saints to be uh, successful uh, uh, back then. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have a long way to go and uh, definitely going to continue to need to help in getting the city back. Congratulations on being among the great former Huskers. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the game. All right, All right we're going to send you back upstairs now, guys. All right, thank you, Stacey. It's so great to see some of these former Huskers who were so good on the field doing so many wonderful things off the field after their playing days are over. Lucky gets tripped up, actually will lose a yard. Matt, this is a big series and a big moment in the game for the Husker offense and for Sam Keller to rally now, trailing 10-7. Sure is. The last possession was a three and out with a run, a run, and then a pass that was incomplete. Nebraska at that point was seven to seven. Now they're down to ten, ten to seven. First down here, a run, losing a yard. So now a second and 11. Let's see what this offense comes up with. Sam Keller needs to make a big play. Back to throw is Keller. Second and 11. Guns pass caught, purified. Slips one tackler, but there's more white shirts in the area to bring him down at the 32. So it is a pickup of six. It'll set up a third and Five for Nebraska. Kenny Meeks makes the tackle for Ball State. Maurice Purify played a really nice game last week for Nebraska against USC. And the biggest thing was the yards after contact. He would catch the ball and turn his shoulders upfield. And 6'4 and about 230. He's a tough man to bring down. Third and five. Keller in the shotgun. Back to throw. Over the middle, none. Catch has the first down. Pulled down by B.J. Hill at about the 39. It's a seven-yard pickup. A little drag route that time for Terrence Nunn, who now has made a catch in 31 straight Husker games. Yeah, just a, a shallow cross, and Sam Keller has a nice pocket to step up into. He finds Nunn. Got the first down, a big first down. Matt, we've really not seen the Huskers try to stretch the field yet in this game, trying to get something deep down the field. Maybe a, a chance here now as they work the ball out near midfield to try to go downfield a little bit more. Here's a play action. Keller looking deeper downfield. Guns it down the middle. Pass is caught. First down. Ball pops out at the end as the catch was made by Sean Hill. The 6'3 senior H back. Trey Bice. Bice makes the stop for Ball State. Sean Hill coming into the season. Didn't have a catch at all. You'll see Hill crossing the field deep. Sam Keller under pressure and threw a nice ball. I think the ground caused the fumble there after Sean Hill hit the ground. Nice hit by Bice. Good tackle on a bigger offensive player. But Sean Hill has, has come up big for Nebraska in a season where no one really knew who the tight end was going to be that could step up and make catches, and Sean Hill has been that guy so far. Halu, the eye back on first to 10 for the Huskers of the ball state. 37, he gets the ball, tries to get around the right side and quickly knocked down. He'll gain about a yard on the play as ball Bryant Haynes makes a tackle for the Cardinals. 220 left first half. Nebraska does have all three timeouts remaining as they trail it here late first half, 10-7. Time really right now, not an issue. The main thing is moving the ball, getting down to at least getting into field goal range. Obviously, they still want to get a touchdown. Lucky the eye back. Erickson in motion. Little screen pass. Lucky picking his way through the defensive ball. State inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. Chris out on the strong safety makes a tackle, but a well conceived play that time by the Big Red. You'll see Lucky just slip through the defensive line. You could see the pass from Sam Keller. He had to throw it right around a defender, and that's where Marlon Lucky is at his best. When he gets into the open field, he's able to use his speed and strength to get upfield, make people miss. The best part of his game that's changed is he has better patience this year. He's really setting up his blocks well. Castillo, the eye back, back to throw Keller. Sets, holds, finds Castillo in the flat, makes the catch, but to tackle the 10, to the 5, lowers his shoulder down to the one-yard line. 
Trey Lewis with the touchdown saving tackle for Ball State, but there's big old Quentin Castilla banging his way inside the five. It'll be first and goal for Nebraska. Nebraska's running backs today have had a really good job of catching the football. Sam Keller with plenty of time. Give the offensive line credit. Look at the catch by the freshman, Castile. That's the sixth catch for Nebraska running backs today. And how about finishing a play, huh? Put your head down, go get you some, down to the two-yard line. Castillo off the left side, fighting forward. No signal yet. I think he was stopped just shy of the goal line as Brian Haynes brings him down just outside the white line. We're inside of a minute to play first half. Huskers still have all three timeouts left. They'll have second and goal inside the one. Steele thought he got in there. Let's see. Look at him move the pile. Ooh. Looks like he was. They could review this. I think he did break the plane. It looked like on the other view. Look at that. I don't think his knees were down yet, were they? Balls over the line, at least by a foot. Second and goal. Castillo off the left side. This time he's in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Huskers back in front, 13-10. What a big drive for that offense, for Sam Keller. And for the confidence, and how about a freshman stepping up, Quentin Castile, getting the ball in the last three plays, showing a lot of determination to get into the end zone. And probably the biggest drive of the year so far. Alex Henry to try to add one more point on the board for Nebraska. Snap down, kick is up. And it is 14-10. NU with a lead, 26 seconds left. First half. The left side of that Nebraska offensive line gets a good push, a lead blocked by Lawson, a missed tackle by Ball State. And for Castile, near 250 pounds, you just shed tacklers like that. They want to try to arm tackle you, run right through him. Well. Nine play, 73 yard drive, four minutes to chew up almost the rest of the half. But there are answer drives you have to make to win football games. That might have been one big one for Nebraska there after Ball State had forged ahead 10 7 to get the lead before going to the locker room. And with only 26 seconds left, Ball State does have two timeouts. They may just sit on this to end the, the end the half. Well, you think they probably will. And as you look at some of the stats, I mean, they're pretty even across the board right now. Both of these two teams, the same number of plays and yards, really, 187 yards apiece. Here's the kickoff. It's going to sail. Loves gets it two yards deep. We'll go to a knee. Ball State will bring it out to the 20. Kunalik finds the end zone again for a touchback. Big advantage for Nebraska this year to have a guy like Kanalik come in and kick it into the end zone. You move it back to the 30-yard line, and you look at statistics that they've done over the years. If a team starts at the 20-yard line or the 30-yard line or the 35-yard line, the percentages get so much better that you're going to put points on the board if you don't start at your own 20-yard line. That was a big drive for several reasons. One is that Nebraska under Bill Callahan nearly unbeatable when they take the lead into the locker room, and that's what looks like they will have here. Lewis gets the handoff. Short gain on first down of about three, and that may be the final play of the half. So a good drive by Nebraska late in the half to reclaim the lead. 14 to 10 is the score. But uh, Ball State's going to be in this game for a while. I think their offense has plenty of confidence as they go to the locker room, only trailing by four points in this game. Right, and the biggest concern for them going into this game was will Nebraska be able to get a lot of pressure on Nate Davis knowing they have an offensive line that isn't maybe able to protect him against a, a bigger defensive line of Nebraska and that's been the thing that they've done the best today they've given him time he's been able to step up in the pocket and find some of his wide receivers downfield had it not been for a few drops his numbers would be better and the yards would be much more for Ball State. Stacy, standing by with Bill Callahan. All right thanks guys very much coach how do you build on that momentum that you just did in that great last drive? Well that's exactly right we want to build on that we just got to be more consistent with our pass rush that's the biggest thing right now if we can generate a pass rush it'll help us out greatly. Any adjustments you'll make in the defense? 
Uh, I think we continue to adjust. There's a lot of formation football out there that we got to uh, be alert to. A lot of things that we're reacting to. So we're going to adjust at halftime and get ready for the second half. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. All right, Stacy. Bill Callahan worried about that pass rush. Huskers do have a four-point lead at the break, 14 to 10. Nebraska leads Ball State. We're back to begin our halftime. You're watching College Football on FSN. Nebraska will be home again next week, taking on Iowa State in their conference opener. As the Huskers with the kickoff. Dante Love deep, and that's way deep in the end zone on the kickoff by Kunalik. And so Ball State will start this drive from their own 20. We talked about it, a big advantage for a defense when you can pin a team back on their 20 yard line, make them go 80 yards. Now the last time Nebraska made Ball State start on the 20, they went 80 yards in 10 plays and scored a touchdown. So let's see if there's any adjustments made either by the defense of Nebraska or if Ball State went in at halftime and saw a few things they can exploit here in the second half. Davis under center, hands it off to Lewis. Right side, no hole. No gain on first down. Lewis, Zach Potter Warriors. over there to jam up the hole for the black shirt defense. You see Philip Dillard in there starting at the middle linebacker position. That play was made by the defensive line. All the guys really stretching the play out, not allowing any surge by the offensive line of Ball State. Second and 10. Davis in the shotgun. Twins to the far side. Grant in motion. Davis rolls, sets, throws. Caught up near the 45 yard line for a first down by Joe Everett. A couple of terrific catches in this game by Joe Everett. Let's go down to the sideline and get some thoughts from Stacy Pates. Well, thank you very much. You know, going into halftime, of course, the momentum was on the side of Nebraska. Back by the Ball State locker room, though, these guys still had a lot of umph in their game. They were coming out of the locker room like nothing had happened that went against their team. They were coming out saying, yeah, we're at Memorial Stadium. We're playing a top team, but we can do this. We're here for a reason. We've already played the first half. They were looking forward to coming out here in the second half. Well, a terrific throw, Stacy, there on that play from Davis to Everett to keep this drive alive. First and 10 for the 44. This is Lewis. Short gain in the play of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Sue makes the tackle for Nebraska. You wonder about the emotional tank of the Huskers, Matt. Last week there was so much talk all offseason about the USC game, how emotionally high that was. What do these guys have left emotionally for this game today? Well, that's where it comes down to leadership, and we've talked about it, but you have to have guys that just will not allow their teammates to have a letdown. You have to have guys holding people accountable, in the in the huddle on the sidelines and keeping everybody up. Second and nine for the 45. Davis rolls to the to the near side, looking deep downfield, throws a pass downfield, incomplete. It was intended for the tight end Darius Hill. On the coverage was Bo Root, and Root has done a nice job on several occasions of staying right with that talented tight end for Ball State. Yes, he did. And that's a tall order for a linebacker to be able to run with a tight end like that. Look at Root. Doesn't get any better than that. Great coverage. Nate Davis had plenty of time to deliver the ball, but really it was a one-man route when they were trying to find a mismatch. Root, a first-team All-Big 12 pick a year ago. Senior out of Lincoln. Played at Southeast High. It's third and nine for Ball State at their own 45. Davis back. Throws it out in the flat. Incomplete. Under through Lewis. Although the Huskers had it fairly well defended, Rube was out there in coverage. Clayton Seavers also out there to put some pressure on Davis. And now it'll be fourth down and time to punt for Ball State. So a good job of the Huskers of coming out and preventing Ball State from getting points on the board early in the third quarter. Yeah, nice defensive stand by the Black Shirts. That play was defended well, even if Lewis would have been able to make the catch. I don't think he was going to get the first down. Bo Rude was out there to make the play. Grigsby deep. Miller to punt it away. Booming kick. Grigsby with a catch at the 11. Eludes one tackler up the field and then gets tipped up. Oh, he might have gone if he gets through that little wedge. 
They'll mark him down at the 26 yard line as Cody Muhlenkamp, the long snapper, made the tackle that time on Grigsby. There was only one man left, and it was the punter, and he was about 30 more yards downfield. Courtney's going to remember this one. Look at the little ankle tackle. Barely even touched his ankle. Sheds one man. Good job blocking by Nebraska. There was no one left besides the punter. I like his odds with about 30 yards to work with. Lucky picking his way across the 30 to the 31, a gain of nearly five on first down. We talked about play distribution a lot in the first half. Huskers ran 34 plays in that first half. They attempted 14 passes, rushed it 20 times. So a little, little bit more running game today than what we saw last week against SC. And let's see if that starts to wear on the defensive line of Ball State. I mean, you want to use that big size up front that Nebraska has, the big advantage, 40, 50 pounds a man across the front. You'd think once you lean on them for two, three, four quarters, these gains start to become bigger on the Nebraska rushing game. Castile off the right side. He has a hole. A flag comes out. The ball comes out. It's loose near the 40-yard line. There is a pile up there. Ball State says they've got it. No official signal yet. And now it is. It's Cardinal football. We'll see what the flag is, but it was thrown by the umpire. You would think that would be holding on Nebraska. We might have a turnover here on Nebraska. Castile. That's right. It was holding. It's going to be Ball State football, so a turnover by Nebraska after they get the ball back on a nice defensive stand by the Blackshirts. You'll see Castile go off the right side. Nice blocking and a nice run, but the ball was never secured, really. It was always in it. You'll see, right? There, just letting the ball get out from the high and tight position. Gets knocked out. And Freshman turns it back over to Ball State and gives them nice field position. Trey Lewis recovers the fumble for the Cardinals. We have it at the Husker 39-yard line. Davis, play action fake, looking downfield as a man down there. The pass is caught and knocked out of bounds. Is Hill at the 15-yard line. Greg, how about this throw? Once again, rolling to his left. And as an offensive coordinator, when you're calling plays and you know your quarterback can go either direction and get it done, a little play action bootleg to the right, under pressure, two men in his face. He throws a perfect pass down the field, and it was a nice route. Hill made the play all the way down to the Nebraska 15-yard line. Nate Davis is a player. Lewis will be the back as Ball State has first and 10 for the 15. Loves in motion. Davis under center. Lewis with the pitch, trying to get around the south side. Maybe gets a yard. Octavian over there to make the tackle. At the 14, it'll be second and nine. See, Ball State just running the ball enough to keep that Nebraska defense in check. And they tried to run on the edge. Nebraska's done a pretty good job today. Just a little toss sweep. You see a little penetration. Sue able to get into the backfield. Potter able to get into the backfield. And really nice pursuit getting down the line of scrimmage by Steve Octavian came up to clean up the play. Second and nine for the Cardinals. Bottle of 14. Davis in the shotgun. Four wide receivers in the pattern. Davis is back. Steps up. He might run. He's to the 10. Angles to the 5. Stiff arms. Leans. Touchdown. Ball State. Nate Davis picked his way down the field, just gets the ball inside the pylon, and the Cardinals have the lead here in Lincoln. Spread the Nebraska defense out, ran four wide receivers down the field, left nobody in the middle of the football field after what looked like to be a blitz by Corey McEwen. He wasn't able to run down Nate Davis. Good blocking downfield by the wide receivers of Ball State. Davis falls into the end zone, stretches out the ball, and. Gives Ball State the lead once again off the turnover by Nebraska. Hope to try to add an extra point. It's up and it is good. Ball State takes advantage of the Husker turnover. They immediately drive 39 yards and reclaim the lead here in Lincoln. 17 14 with 11 31 left to go in this third quarter. We're back with a Cardinal kick, but Nate Davis putting on a show here today in Lincoln. He's now thrown for a touchdown and now gets one via the run.
This is Nebraska. The home of champions. The nation's finest student athletes. Success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. Nate Davis, the sophomore quarterback, has now run for a touchdown of this game to put Ball State in front. Yesterday, Matt, you and I had a chance to talk with Stan Parrish, the offensive coordinator for Ball State, who had spent a number of years at Michigan working with quarterbacks like Brian Greasy and Tom Brady, pretty familiar names to NFL <laughs> fans. And Stan Parrish said, boy, this kid doesn't take a backseat to those guys at all. Right, and he's been a coach for a long time all over the country, Stan Parrish, and he says Nate Davis throws the best ball he's ever seen. He has the best arm of anybody he has coached, and yeah, Tom Brady, Brian Greasy, amongst others, that's saying a lot. This kid's only 20 years old and starting his 11th game of his career, so he's got a bright future ahead of him, and he's brought his team in here today and has the lead at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. This is Grigsby up that right sideline to about the 25 gets knocked down there. The other thing about Nate Davis, heck of a basketball player in high school. He said he scored 40 points in a game. Well, he averaged 38 a game as a senior. I mean, he's only 6'2". He, he says if he would have been 6'5 or 6'6", he probably would have tried to play basketball in college. But at 6'2", he thought, hey, let's give football a shot. But how about that? 38 a game, scored over 1,800 points in his career in high school. Second time today, the Husker offense has needed an answer. They had it the first half. Let's see if they can do it here. Lucky bounces to the outside near a first down and around the 35-yard line. So Martin Lucky picking up the yardage. He's now nearing 80 yards on the day. Eddie Burke, the free safety, along with Mike Derulo, makes a tackle for Ball State. Just a little off-tackle play. Marlon bounces it to the outside. Right side of that offensive line with Leiden Murthoff. Matt Slauson just kind of caved everything down. And off the bounce, he was able to get a first down. Gain of 11. Lucky again. Into the heart of the defense for about four to the 41. And you can see Bill Callahan isn't going to get in a hurry to try to get the lead back. Let that offensive line work on the defensive line of Ball State. Maybe wear them down a little bit. Pick your spots. Get the running game going and then go with the play action. And then go downfield to these wide receivers, but still plenty of time. No reason to panic. Try to wear Ball State down a little bit. Lucky remains the eye back on second and six from the 41. Phillips in motion. Lucky gets the handoff. Jitterbugs is way to the 44. Gain of three. It'll be third and three. Kenny Meeks looks at tackle along with Alex Kennett. Sophomore strong safety. Ball State's defense, Matt, on the year, only allowing their opponents to convert 40% of the third downs. Look at Nebraska today, three of seven on third downs. They're kind of right in that same area. So this defense has been able to, all season long for the Cardinals, make plays on third down. You get that third down right down to the 30, 40% like they've done. And you can't get the ball back for an offense with Nate Davis on it. You're going to win a lot of football games. Third and three. There's flags on the play. Motion on Nebraska. That will back them up five yards. Yards come out of the half. Oh, Huskers have called a timeout before that play. The play clock was running down, and Nebraska was really having a fire drill trying to get set in that uh, for that third down play. So Nebraska calls a timeout. We'll step away as well. 9.59 left. Ball State by three. Academic success plays a vital role for Nebraska athletics. The Hall of Distinction honors those student athletes who have achieved both athletic and academic success at Nebraska. The names of nearly 5,000 letter winners who have earned their degrees while competing at the university are engraved in the hall, including a nation-leading number of academic All-Americans. Tradition, teamwork, integrity. Come visit the Hall of Distinction located in the Hewitt Center under the direction of Dennis LeBlanc in West Memorial Stadium. This is Nebraska. The home of champions. The nation's finest student athletes. 
success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska, 17-14 ball stay with the lead over Nebraska. Greg Sharp, Matt Davison with you here on FSN. The Huskers had to answer a, a score in the first half to reclaim the lead. They need to do it again here with the ball back down by three. Absolutely. Ball State has gotten the momentum back, and now you, the onus is now on your offense again to go down and put a drive together and take the lead back. It was an unfortunate turnover for Quentin Castile, who turned it back over to Ball State. And we have a guy like Nate Davis at quarterback for Ball State. They're going to put points on the board, especially when you give the ball to them on, in your territory at the 39-yard line. They go down and score, so now Nebraska has to answer. No reason to panic here, though. Huskers still with a lot of time, deep still early in the third quarter of this game. Nebraska, though, faced with a third and three here from their own 44. Keller back, looks, Lucky falls down. He comes back across the field and then has a drop pass by Dan Erickson, who could not hang on. It would have been an easy first down. I think his first option was Lucky, who was tripped up and goes down, but Erickson has to make that catch. Wide open across the field, and I think Sam Keller wishes he'd have thrown a little bit better ball, but uh, yeah, that's one that you're going to have to make a play for your quarterback for, and Erickson knows that. On a third down that Nebraska really, really needed, that puts them at three of eight on the day now. There looks at what they've done run past today, more running the football. Now they have to punt it away. Titchener with a kick. B.J. Hill back at the 12, makes a catch up the field as a seam runs into his own man and finally knocked down at the 51-yard line as Bo Rude in on the tackle for the Huskers. Now you, with the offense unable to go reclaim the lead, now your defense for the Huskers needs to get out there and stop things. Well, get a three and out, get the ball back for your offense, or how about forcing a turnover? This defense needs to get aggressive not allow Nate Davis to stand back there and pick their secondary apart. There have been plenty of plays today where Nebraska's secondary has done well in coverage, but they haven't been able to get pressure on Nate Davis. And, and the other thing is for, for Nate Davis, he's, a, he's really good at scrambling and buying time for his wide receivers. Just a little time here and there to give his guys a chance to get open. First and 10 Cardinals of their own 24, 9.42 left third quarter. Davis again rolls the pocket, throws a pass downfield, and overthrows the intended receiver on the far sideline. And Everett, Octavian, lit up Davis as he let go of the football that time. We've seen this play a little reverse pivot out off the snap for Nate Davis. He just fakes the handoff and rolls to his left like they've done a lot with him today. We've seen that play three or four times already. Good job by Steve Octavian to get in his face. Second and 10, Lewis gets the pitch. And gets slammed down after a gain of a yard. He just gets planted at the end of that play by Zach Potter. The junior out of Omaha, Creighton Prep, with a big hit that time on Lewis. And that's the kind of play that can give a defense a little bit of a spark. See Potter just try to stretch the play out, use those long arms. And how about that hit? Once again, the pad level. When you're 6'7", 280, I guess you can do about anything you want. But that's a big hit that can give a defense a little energy on a third and long. Nine minutes left, third quarter, third and nine for the Cardinals. Davis back, little screen pass out in the flat. Lewis eludes one man, gets up to the 31, but it's not enough for a first down. It's a pickup of six. They needed nine. Bo Rude makes a tackle, so the Black Shirts do throw up a three and out on Ball State's offense, and the Cardinals will be forced to punt here. A little bit of a surprising call there, I think, by Ball State to throw it out into the flat on a little screen. You need nine yards, and they've done a pretty good job when they've gone downfield today. You're asking a lot for a running back to make three or four guys miss to get a first down, but give Nebraska's defense a lot of credit for forcing them to go underneath with the football. And here's Chris Miller having to punt into a slight breeze here with Courtney Grigsby back deep for Nebraska. A low kick, but a good Whoa. kick. Grigsby have to drift back. It takes a Husker bounce. And we'll be down inside the 20 to 19 yard line. That's a good kick by Chris Miller. Again, we told you that he's a preseason Playboy All-American. Did you have that distinction? Did you <laughs> get that trip? That's one I wish I would have had. <laughs> but uh, no, I can't say you that. You didn't get that trip. That's not in my bio, no. Miller does a heck of a job <laughs> with that kick. Although we should have got an interview with him about that trip maybe. 
We should have sat down yesterday and requested that, <laughs> shouldn't we? Yeah. Well, here come the Husker offense back out of the field. Nebraska down 17-14. They'll start at their own 19-yard line. There's a look at what they've done this second half. Turnover and a punt. Lucky off the right side. Nice gain of seven on first down up to the 26. Alex Knipp makes a tackle for the Cardinals. Once again, pounding the ball. Off the right side, Matt Slauson and Leiden Murtha. Two guys with big bodies who are really leaning on the left defensive front of Ball State. And we talked about it, but now the rush is up to 26 times now for Nebraska. So they're really starting to wear down that defensive line, I think, from Ball State. Lucky with a gain of two on that play. It'll be third down and one. Marlin inching closer to a 100-yard rushing day. Now has 96 yards on the afternoon. 7-15 left third quarter, 17-14, ball stay with the lead. Huskers were a three-touchdown favorite coming into this game today. Another third down, Greg, third and two. So kind of that in-between yardage. You'd like to think you can get two on the ground. We'll see if they go to the air. Staggered set behind Keller. Play action. Looking downfield, throws it downfield as Hill out there, makes a catch at the 40, he may go, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Nebraska. Sean Hill off of play action, slips through the secondary of Ball State, and there was no one left. Give Sam Keller a lot of credit. Watch the patience here, he really sells it. Watch the patience. He lets the play develop and throws just a money ball down the field. And nobody there for Sean Hill. Big play for the Nebraska offense on a third and short. What a play call by Bill Callahan. First touchdown catch of the year for Sean Hill. Henry's PAT is up and through the uprights. 21-17, Nebraska, a 73-yard pitch and catch from Keller to Hill. Huskers reclaim the lead here. Midway through the third quarter, Nebraska, Sam Keller. The touchdown pass, his 31st of his career, and the fifth of the season, giving NU the lead back. Who has the power to harness energy? The University of Nebraska Lincoln Research finds answers to global problems. With leading edge science, we explore renewable energy, reduce the impact of drought, conserve and protect our natural resources. It's clear the University of Nebraska-Lincoln helps keep the planet green. Now that's the power of red. This is Nebraska. The home of champions. the nation's finest student-athletes. Success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. We're on a journey of discovery, a journey that is unlocking the secrets of disease at the genetic level. The result? Revolutionary cancer vaccines and research breakthroughs in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And with every discovery, we provide new knowledge to thousands and new hope, one patient at a time. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. 73-yard touchdown pass. From Sam Keller to Sean Hill. Here's a look at Sam and his father. We're in the a black shirt Husker attire today, and Nebraska back at front 21 17. You can see the emotion from Sam Keller after the touchdown pass. Said a little prayer, I think, there. I'll tell you what, he wants to win. He's a competitor, and you have to love how he comes out and plays with so such energy on every single play. Dante Love, five yards deep, will go to an eight. Ball State will take over on this drive of their 20 yard line. But they get one of the eight backs. Involved for the long touchdown throw. Sean Hill in the tight end position. And on a third and short, you might think run. Sure, there you go. There's fake on the play action. And up over the top, a bad angle. 
taken there by the defender from Ball State, B.J. Hill. And you just can't let a guy get behind you like that. And if he is behind you, you better take a better angle because Hill probably could have ran Sean Hill down right. had he not tried to dive and knock the ball away. Yeah, he, he took a gamble and it didn't pay off that time for Ball State. Now the Cardinals back on offense. Franks Edmonds in the backfield. Davis guns a pass to Love, makes a catch, has a first down. Bo Rood on the sideline to throw him out of bounds, but it's a 10 yard pickup and Ball State quickly gets a first down. Well, Huskers can't relax here. This Ball State offense has been fairly prolific throughout the game today, and the lead right now is only four. I think when Nate Davis gets the ball in his hands, he feels like they're going to go down and at least get some first downs. This offense has some weapons for sure, and we've said it, but this offensive line has played pretty darn good today for Ball State. Edmonds gets the handoff, bounces to the outside, cuts up, gets maybe a half yard of the play. Turner and Octavian make the tackle. It has been a Nate Davis afternoon here for this sophomore quarterback for the Cardinals. A little reverse pivot out of the backfield. A nice throw on the little flag route by Davis, or by Love. Once again, going to his left. Does a good job of getting his shoulders square. And here using his legs, see the athleticism, getting upfield, diving into the end zone. When you get that close, you want to stick it in there. Good job getting the football over the goal line. Second and 10 for Ball State. Thrown 31 flags come out, play has been blown dead. We'll have a procedure penalty here on the Cardinals. Ball start on the offense, number 52. Five yard penalty, still second down. We have not had many whistles in this game. That's the third penalty of the game on Ball State. The Huskers only have two. Fairly clean game. Yeah, well done by both teams. Shows a lot of discipline. For Ball State, tough penalty. Get a half a yard on first down. Now you move back five, so you're second and long. Gives Nebraska's defense a chance to do a lot of different things here. Let's see if they bring a blitz or if they do anything crazy on defense to try to get a little pressure on Nate Davis. I don't think you want to let him sit back there and pick you apart. Just bring four. Davis steps up, looks downfield, guns, ball batted away. Davis catches it on a deflection. Bo Rood batted it. It came right back to Davis, who catches it and moves forward to about the 35. So it's a gain of about eight on the play. What a strange play. Can't say I've seen that before when you're out of the pocket, at least. What a heads up play by Davis and give Bo Root credit. He did a good job knocking the ball down. But Davis is able to grab it and get a 10 yard gainer out of it. Sets up a manageable third and five. Pretty unfortunate play there for wow. Bo Root and the black shirts. Third and five from the 35. Lewis in the backfield with Davis who will operate out of a shotgun with 527 to go in the third. Over the middle. Caught Love, first down. He's a little jitterbug in the Nebraska territory to the 43. Murillo makes a tackle for NU, but Dante Love, who's one of the playmakers on this Ball State team, comes up with a big one there on third down. He saw the blitz. It's a little hot route. You see the blitz, you just run underneath. Try to lose your man Murillo in all the traffic in the middle of the field. And Davis dumped it right off underneath to him, and he's able to get a big gain out of it. Now all the way down and in, into Nebraska territory. 22-yard pickup of the play. Lewis in the backfield. There's movement up front. They let the play go. This may be a penalty on Nebraska, but there goes Lewis around the corner. 25, cutting back to the middle of the field. He's at a 10. He is into the end zone for a touchdown. We will check the penalty, but this looked like it was Nebraska offsides up front. That may stand. What a bolt by Mikhail Lewis for a touchdown. Decline. Touchdown. The Cardinals have reclaimed the lead late in the third quarter here in Lincoln. It's just a toss sweep to the left side, and you'll see a couple of a pulling guard and another lead blocker around the left side. Everybody going this way, and they get upfield. Look at the big crease, and then the vision by Lewis to cut it all the way back across the field. Use that speed right to the middle, and no one was there to run him down. What a big play for this offense off a quick snap, Greg. They didn't have a long snap count there. They kind of caught Nebraska off guard. Point after attempt is up and good. And this has been a back and forth game since the first quarter with Ball State now back in front, 
The Cardinals have not had much success, Matt, running the football, but they kept after it and finally get a big play here. The guard and tackle on the left side lead the way around the edge. And talking with the staff yesterday at Ball State, they said, hey, young offensive line, not a lot of size. We just don't know. Will they be able to protect Nate Davis? And they have done a good job today. That time in the running game, allowing Lewis to get through once he found the edge. There wasn't a great pursuit from Nebraska's defense. And not that it wasn't a dogfight before. But you allow a team like Ball State to stick around, stick around. You're in dangerous territory right now if you're Nebraska. Well, Cardinals have answered five play, 80 yard drive. McQuayle Lewis with that 43 yard dash to put the Cardinals back in front. Rigsby with it on the kick. Gets up near the 30. He's planted at about the 29 yard line. Well, the Huskers are in a dogfight, and that offense has had to answer a couple of times. They need another one here, trailing by three, late third quarter. We've talked about Nebraska's offense really trying to establish a run. You see there Nebraska with a touchdown in each quarter. Ball State was shut out in the first quarter, but since then, they've been really good. Lucky will be the eye back behind Keller. Straight back in the pocket is Sam. Sets, guns, purified. Catch inside Ball State's 35. Down to the 31 yard line. They wondered about stretching the field. There they finally get one to a wide out deep down the field. When Sam Keller came on campus, the one thing you heard about him was he can make all the throws. This is one of those NFL type throws. Down the seam, you have to throw the ball 35, 40 yards in the air with a lot of velocity and he found Purify in a little hole in the defense for a big gain down into Ball State territory. 38 yard pass play to the Cardinal 33. Lucky gets the handoff off the right side. He's immediately swarmed under. He'll lose a couple of yards back to the 36. B.J. Hill, the corner, makes a tackle along with Cortland Booker. And there came Hill off the edge to get involved in that play. That was a couple of shots. Lucky took there, really nowhere to go, so he tried to bounce it. Once you get grabbed around the legs, you're in a really vulnerable position. He had one leg that Booker had a hold of. He took one in the chops. There's a look at your total offense in this game. It's very tight. Has been throughout. Keller on second and 13. Back. Steps up. Complete. Short gain over the middle. Pulled in by Terrence Nunn. At about the 29. It's a gain of seven. It'll be third down and six for Nebraska at the Ball State 29. Keller again with plenty of time. The offensive line. Giving him time right in the middle of the football field. You see Terrence Nunn sit down in that zone. Just a short gain, but a good job by Keller once again, not forcing the ball down the field. Very patient. Stayed hung in that pocket. Keller back. Still again, plenty of time. Finds Lucky. Lucky slips for a first down to the 20-yard line. Bryant Haynes makes the cardinal tackle, but it's a pickup of nine. And the Huskers collect their 14th first down of the game. Lucky just slipped through the defensive line. There was really nobody there. Everybody had dropped into coverage for Ball State. Sam Keller with plenty of time and checked it down again. I think that's the sixth catch of the day for Marlon Lucky to go along with 17 rushes. That's 23 touches already for the starting eyeback. And here is Halu off the right side. Not much room, gets maybe a yard. Haynes again there on the tackle for the Cardinals, 2.45 left third quarter. Ball State 24, Nebraska 21. It is a very quiet Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln as these fans did not expect this close of a game against a, a team that's developing a pretty good reputation out of the Mac and Ball State. Right, and those that, that knew anything about Ball State and this offense, they knew that with Nebraska's defense not really finding a groove yet this year, there was a chance Ball State was going to put up some points today. Keller back throws out of the grasp of Maurice Purify that time. It'll be third down and seven. Late last season, Ball State played in Ann Arbor against Michigan. And remember, Michigan at that time was undefeated, 
chasing that national title. It came down to the final possession of that game as Michigan held off Ball State to win by eight. That's the kind of club that, that uh, Brady Hoke brought into Lincoln here today. And with Nate Davis being a freshman in that game, what we were told was there was no question who was the best quarterback on the, on the field that day in the big house. It wasn't Chad Henney. That's right. Back to throw Keller on third down. Steps up, guns for the end zone. The pass is... Is that caught by Swift? Yes, yeah, touchdown. What a catch. Nate Swift with a terrific grab on the end zone of Nebraska. Back in front, 27-24. Sam Keller put that ball where only Nathan Swift was going to be able to go up and get it. The defender for Ball State Hill turned around, actually had his eye on the ball, but jumped up. Nate Swift just went right up over the top of him and caught it. That's a big time throw and catch in a crunch situation at the end of the third quarter when you're in a dogfight. Point after is good, and Nebraska reclaims the lead by four, 28 to 24. What a grab by Nate Swift, the junior from Hutchinson, Minnesota. Falls in his 10th touchdown catch of his career. It's a double move, fake the slant, get up the sideline. Little pump fake from Keller. Like I said, he only he put it only where Nathan Swift was going to be able to get it. That was a height difference advantage for Nebraska, and Nathan Swift made a play. You have to do that as a wide receiver. You have to make plays for your quarterback, and he did it that time for Sam Keller. 71-yard drive for the Huskers in seven plays, just under three minutes to get it done, and really pretty good coverage on that play by Trey Lewis, the corner of Ball State, just a perfectly thrown ball and a great grab by Swift. And, you know, you've seen better play out of these Husker wideouts, Matt, in recent weeks. They're starting to make some good, tough, and strong catches. Well, the first couple games, there were eight, nine, ten drops maybe in the first two games. But against USC, they were the bright spot of the offense. Sam Keller said yesterday they were what kept the Nebraska offense going down the field and helped them get over 400 yards against one of the best defenses in the country in USC. And once again today, they've made some plays. Ball again kicked out of the back of the end zone, so Ball State will take over at the 20-yard line with 2.09 to go in this third quarter. Well, Nebraska has been forced to answer a couple of times. They have done so. Now Nebraska is going to ask for their defense under Kevin Cosgrove to put up a stop sign again on this Cardinal offensive attack. About as loud as we've heard this crowd all day long. They know the defense needs a little bit of a boost. So they're trying to do that. See if the black shirts can make a play. Someone has to step up and try to get a three and out from the in this offense. You can see it's been an offensive field third quarter. Lewis again gets the corner, steps out of bounds after a five-yard pickup on the play. Ball State's ground game, which has been stunted in the early parts of this game, now seeming to come alive here in the third quarter. Yeah, and it's been on the edges, Greg. They've run these toss sweeps, and they're pulling a guard, a tackle. And for Andre Jones there, he has to force that play back inside. He can't allow them to come up and get the edge and get up field for a five and a half yard game. With Sam Keller and Nate Swift congratulating each other after a terrific throw and catch to put Nebraska back in front, second down and four. Davis over the middle, pass caught, law, first down to the 40, upended at about the 42 yard line by Courtney Grigsby. But again, Ball State running their offense and running it very well to pick up a first down in a big game. Those crossing routes are so tough to cover. You see a little reverse bootleg action there from Davison. And, and then there's Love coming across the field and he's running away from the defender. You see Andre Jones trying to catch him there. But when you're running directly across the field and you give a quarterback that much time and he gets set and he has a gun like Nate Davis, that's an easy throw and catch. 18 yard pickup of the play. Edmonds off the left side stopped for a loss of a yard. It was Zach Potter. We've called his name a couple of times in this quarter to make the play for NU. That's a tough play for a defensive end. Come all the way down the line of scrimmage on a toss sweep and get there and make the play. Potter with a couple big plays here in the third quarter. Second and 11. Ball to the 42. Approaching the one-minute mark of this third quarter. 
Davis rolls to the near side, looking downfield. Everybody's covered. Now he's going to launch a pass deep downfield, and it is caught. Oh and it is at, goodness. The, at the one yard line. No, it's a touchdown for Ball State. What a throw by Davis to Dante Love. It was well covered, but Love pulls it in. As Courtney Grigsby and Larry Asante were on the coverage for Nebraska, but Love makes a catch right at the goal line, and Ball State has the lead again. What a throw and catch. Look at that gun with a guy 6'7 right in your face. And this is good coverage by Nebraska. Larry Asante and Courtney Grigsby hit. The ball could not have been better thrown, but maybe make a play on the ball, huh? Try to knock it down. Ball State's third touchdown of the quarter, and it puts them back in front, 31 to 28. You just have to tip your cap to Davis and Love on that play because, as you mentioned, it was well covered. But Love just made a terrific catch on a throw that was right on the money. Well, let's see how far he throws this football, Greg. There's the 50, the 40. He's about the 32-yard line. He threw that ball over 65 yards in the air. And a strike. In the middle of two defenders, and for the three drops that Love has had today, that might make up for it. Now 157 yards receiving on eight catches for Dante Love. We talked about him early on in the game. He's a little playmaker for this Ball State offense. Well, and so is that young man, Nate Davis. You mentioned it in the open. Maybe the best quarterback in the country no one's heard of. Well, Nate Davis. They'll know about him after today. For sure, 21 points here in the third quarter for Ball State. Davis is 18 of 30 for 316 yards and two touchdowns. There is Andre Jones in the corner with the catch to the 10, up the sideline, and spun of the bounce at the 22-yard line. Derrick Henry makes the tackle for Ball State. 49 seconds left, third quarter, a wild third quarter. If you're just tuning in, it was 14 to 10 at the half. Nebraska led. So both teams have exploded here in the second half. Neither defense has really been able to get a stop. For Nebraska, they've really tried to run the ball. They've, you've seen a couple touchdown passes, but they've pounded it, pounded it, pounded it, and then off a of play action have been able to get the big plays in the passing game. Pitch back to Lucky. Marlon's been a workhorse today. Leaps over a defender. Knocked out of bounds. Trey Lewis bumps him out of bounds, but a pickup of about six on first down. So Marlon Lucky, that was his 18th carry of the game. He also has six receptions. 24 touches. Over 130 yards total offense for Lucky. Sam Keller's been really good today. Kind of quiet, but 16 of 21. 16 of 21 for 261 yards and a couple touchdowns. Second three, play action. Keller back, looking. Guns the ball, caught, purified. In the Ball State territory, down to the 43-yard line. B.J. Hill makes a tackle, but Moist purified coming up big for the Oscars here on the second half. That's his second big catch in half number two. Both of these quarterbacks are playing just whales of games here. Let, let's see Sam Keller in the, in the pocket. Watch him step into this thing. That's a big-time throw on a deep cross. And when you have a big target like Purify going across the middle, that's nice as a quarterback. Went up and made a nice play, but this might be one of those games whoever has the ball last. 28-yard pickup on that play. First and 10, Nebraska at the ball state, 42. Keller back. Has time. Over the middle, Lucky. Short gain for Lucky. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. It's a pickup of six as Mike Derula makes a tackle for the Cardinal defense. That was a wild third quarter of play here in Lincoln. And Ball State will leave the third quarter with the lead, 31 to 28 over Bill Callahan's Nebraska Cornhuskers. We are set up for a terrific fourth period of play here in Lincoln. After three, Ball State 31, Nebraska 28. And you always wanted to come out here and perform for them guys when, when you played here. If you, if I would have told you freshman, sophomore year, you're gonna be in the Nebraska Hall of Fame one day, would you believe me? I wouldn't have believed because of the fact it's, it's a long list of guys here that deserve it besides myself. And 
just playing underneath those great guys just puts me to play harder. And I, I would have never thought I would have made it to the Nebraska Hall of Fame. And speaking of those great guys, your name is now mentioned among some of the best to come through a very storied program. What was your first thought when you knew your name was going to be up there? Man, I was like, it was like a dream come true. You know, just to put on that uniform to become a black shirt, follow the footsteps of like Roger Thomas, Mike Crow, Trev Alberts. You know, those guys set the bar for, for us linebackers. And just to be able to, to um, we're staying at the same level of play makes me feel good. And now you're able to give back to student athletes just as you were coached coming up through the ranks. He is a high school coach in North Carolina. We spoke with Tom Osborne earlier about how impressive it is and how important it is not only to coach the X's nose, but also to be a leader as far as making these guys men. Yes, it is because growing up, I had a great um, high school football coach, Larry Johnson. He currently coaches at Penn State now. And he, was, he, was, he wasn't only a coach to me, he was like a father figure as well. Many tutors, he allowed me to get tutors to help me when I had problems in school. He helped me with my SATs by, by hiring somebody to come in and, and let me take the um, pre-SATs. So that's something I like to give back just because he helped me out and he pulled me up and made my game go to a different level. So now I try to do the same thing with these young kids, you know, try to be a positive role model for these guys, helping them out on the field and off the field. And perhaps now you'll be coaching a future Hall of Famer. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Greg and Matt. Good job, Stacy. Terrence Nunn with a short reception over the middle. Down to the 25. It is enough for a Husker first down as Nebraska needs to answer this Ball State offense. And you down by three, but first and ten at the Ball State 25. Keller in the shotgun. Holds, throws, incomplete. Trying to hit Sean Hill off of his fingertips out of bounds. It'll be second down and ten. Eddie Burke on the coverage. He's the free safety for the Cardinals. Well, there were crossing wide receivers across the middle of the field. Maurice Purify was the guy that Keller should have tried to go to there. Sean Hill wasn't able to make the, the grab, but how about these whew, total yards? Over 800 yards of total offense. You add that up in three quarters. Over 600 of it through the air for these two quarterbacks. Second and 10, and Nebraska's Carl Nix, left tackle, moved a tick too early. That'll be five yards on the Huskers and put them in a second and 15. On the offense, number 77. Five yard penalty, still second down. Hard to miss when you're 6'5", 330 if you move a little <laughs> early. You know what Dante was mentioning about his high school coach, Larry Johnson, yes that is LJ's dad. That uh, was his coach who went on to Penn State to coach, so Dante did come from a heck of a high school program. LJ might have a long year down Ooh. in Kansas City. Trying to talk Will Shields into coming back, I would think. Second 15. Maybe Keller. that's why he didn't come back. <laughs> Keller down the field, has a man down there. It's knocked away. Was it intercepted? Yes, it was. What a grab by B.J. Hill, his third pick of the year. That is an athletic play at the three-yard line. Well, I want to see the replay on that one because that looked like as good a play as you'll see a corner make breaking on the ball. It looked like it was a sure touchdown for Nebraska. We won the move. He had his man beat. Sam Keller tried to thread it in there. Watch the angle he takes to cut this ball off and pick it down at the three or four yard line. France Hardy is the wide receiver. And that's a risky play for a corner to make. If you miss that, when you take that angle, if you don't pick it off, it's a sure touchdown for Nebraska. And remember, Matt, B.J. Hill was the man who went for it against Sean Hill earlier in the game and didn't come up with it. There he goes for it and comes up with a big pick right up the middle. Big hole as Lewis gets out front to the 20. Jitterbugs his way to the 27. Hit from behind by Octavian. But the Husker defense had a big hole open up in the middle that time as they get out of jail, really, from the four-yard line out to the 27 on that carry. We talk about missed tackles last week against USC. Let's see here. There's one. There's an arm tackle. And then once Lewis breaks through the line, there's another missed tackle. Finally, Octavian brings him down. But 
boy, that's frustrating as a defense. You have them pinned down there. Yes, they, you, your offense just turned it over, but you have them pinned inside the five-yard line. Now, all of a sudden, they're out past the 25. Davis back, throws it downfield, looking for Love. He's out there, makes a catch, 30-yard line down the sideline. He beat the coverage that time of Courtney Grigsby, and they'll say he's out of bounds at around the 22-yard line. Another perfect throw by Nate Davis down the near boundary. Big play between him and Dante Love. And right now, Nebraska better hope Dante Love just getting tired. Over 200 yards receiving now, and that was the throw. Over the left shoulder of Dante Love, maybe a little push off there on Courtney Grigsby, gave him just enough room to catch it on the sideline, but two huge chunks of yardage, now all the way down to the 22-yard line of Nebraska. Lewis the tailback, first and 10 for the Cardinals. Ball State leads by three. Lewis off the left side. Waits, leans, gets a yard. And Dominican Sue over there to put up a roadblock for the black shirt defense, which is getting pushed around here on their own field today by Ball State and this incredibly talented quarterback, Nate Davis. He's quietly putting together, not only want to say quietly maybe, but having a really good day. And Quayle Lewis kind of being overshadowed by Nate Davis, but over 100 yards against the Black Shirts. Rush defense again, once again, not just the rush defense, but the, the pressure they haven't been able to get. It's the front four that's really causing problems. Davis throws it away, and he's probably outside of the tackle box, so that's probably going to stand up. Crowd wants intentional grounding, but if you get outside the tackles, you can throw it away. And he did that. There was a wide receiver over there. You'll see him just roll back around here after a little pivot. He'll roll out to the right side. Octavian does a good job of getting off the blocker, but he is outside the tackle box. And he got the ball back to the line of scrimmage. So that's a legal play for a quarterback to make. Third and nine. The ball stayed at the Husker 21. Cardinals lead it 31-28. Early fourth quarter. Davis. Rolls to the right, sets back to the left, wide open, pass caught, and that is going to be a Cardinal touchdown by Madarius Grant. They have rolled that pocket mat a lot today, and usually they have thrown the side that they roll. This time they come back against the grain, and Grant is wide open and walks in for six points. Just another little wrinkle, and you'll see him just slip over across the field there as everybody else was going to the right side. Just snuck to the other side of the field with all the congestion and everything going to the right side. They've been setting that play up. We've seen it eight or nine times today at least. Now they finally go to the last option on that play. And that's an easy throw and catch for a touchdown. All right, big miss extra point here by Ho. Instead of a 10 point game, it's a nine point lead for Ball State. We'll see if that comes back to haunt the Cardinals. 37-28 as Ball State misses the PAT. But another touchdown pass from Nate Davis, this time to Medarius Grant. Cardinals looking for an upset here in Lincoln. For technology to advance as rapidly as it has, technology education must advance even faster. The University of Nebraska has built an institute that will impress even the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies. Because the world's most sophisticated technology-based companies help design the curriculum. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. Get your tickets on the Husker Express. We're all on board, are you? Get on the Husker Express! We need you on board. Get on board, the Husker Express! Nebraska the basketball! Woo! I'm on board. Are you? We need you on board. Nebraska basketball! Get on board! Welcome back to a stunned Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln as Ball State now is forged out in front by two scores, 37-28. Nate Davis has been phenomenal. You know the Husker offense has to respond, but at some point, the Blackshirt defense needs to get a stop for Nebraska. Well, that's right, and you know the offense has to score. If you're down nine points, you have to score to get back in this thing. 
But yeah, you have to get a stop. Over 500 yards of offense. This defense has already given up with practically a quarter to play. So somebody has to step up and make a play. The Nebraska offense is going to get the ball here. Let's see if that extra point missed by Ball State comes back to haunt them later on in the game. Those tend to do that in games like this. 37-28 our score. Ball State with the kickoff. And this one's into the end zone. And remember, Ball State's got the wind at their back here in the fourth quarter. Nebraska will have to do this into the wind. 12.50 to go. Long ways to go in this game. And a crowd that's literally stunned here in Lincoln today. Right, and if you look at the offense of Nebraska, hey, you're averaging 7.5 yards of play every snap. Over 400 yards of offense. Sam Keller has had a really nice day. Over 300 yards and a couple scores. Marlon Lucky's over 100 yards rushing. How in the world are you down nine points in this thing? Well, you really haven't stopped anybody all day long. Back to throw Keller. He has all day to throw. Still now rolling, throws it downfield, pass is caught for a first down by Peterson. Todd makes a catch just across the 30-yard line. And a good play by Keller. Looks like he might just run the ball and get a couple of yards and get out of bounds. He bought enough time, and as a wide receiver, you have to keep working through that play. Try to find an opening, come back to your quarterback and help him out. Peterson was able to get 11 yards and get a first down there for this offense. Lucky is the eye back. Gets the handoff and gets brought down quickly by Cortland Booker. It'll be second down and 10. Now, you don't want to totally abandon the run. You don't need to panic yet. Still 12, over 12 minutes to go, but down two scores, you can't take forever to get down the field. No, the clock is going to definitely be, start to become a factor. The nine-point deficit. And just when you thought, yeah, you might be wearing Ball State down a little bit, and yeah, now maybe you don't even have time to continue to start wearing them down in the running game. You have to start getting big chunks of yards through the air. Second and 10, Keller out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. He goes deep downfield looking for Hardy, overshoots him. It'll be third down and 10. Trey Lewis on the coverage, and this is a huge third down here for Nebraska. He had his man, too. France Hardy had beaten the defender down the middle of the football field, and Keller wanted to lead him across the field, I think, a little bit more. Instead, he threw it over his outside shoulder. Instead of leading him across the field, Hardy, the speed man for Nebraska in this wide receiver core, and that could have been six points real easily. Third and 10. There's a look at third down conversions. Nebraska just over 50% of the day. Big one here. Keller has time. Throws, pass, is dropped. In and out of the hands. Now flags come out. And it could be interference called here. As Holt was the intended receiver for Nebraska. They may have got there. The defender may have got there just a little early. And this would be a big call to keep the drive going. Look like it could be a punt for Nebraska. Tom Walker, our white interference hat. on the defense, number 21. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. First down. So a huge play. Circle that in your playbook there with 11.43 to go in a game. Let's see if there's contact. Hard to tell from that angle. Yeah, where you, they're, you don't know. The, the call came from the other side of the field. Might have had his right arm around him. Keller back. He gets hit. Goes down. He'll lose about four yards in the play. As Brandon Crawford and Kenny Meeks combine on that sack. And it will set up second down and 14 for Nebraska. Inside 11 and a half left to go in the game. It wasn't a blitz at all. Sam had some time there to deliver the ball, but no one was open. He had to eat it. Now it's second and 14, and the clock is still running. Keller in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Throws it out in the flat. Lucky with a catch. Short gain of the 46. A gain of six. It'll be third and eight. Troy Davis, the nose tackle, and B.J. Hill. Combined on that tackle. Martin Lucky's eighth catch of the game. Clock on the roll, 10.45 left. Another big third down, obviously. Third and eight from the 46 yard line. Brady Hoke, fifth year coach of the Cardinals. He's a defensive guy. He's, in fact, as a, during the game, you see him, he primarily works with that defensive huddle. 
Back to throw Keller on third and eight. Down the field, pass caught, first down. Spinning away, heading down the field. Is Maurice Purify for a big pickup to the Wall State 27 yard line. I've been very impressed with Maurice Purify the last two weeks when he's been able to catch the ball, getting a lot of yards after the catch. We'll see him just sit down right in the middle of the field. Keller delivers the ball and watch him attack this guy in the secondary. He says, I'm going to run right over you. Keeps the drive alive for the Huskers of the 27. Of Ball State, a 27 yard pickup from Keller to Purify. Keller back, fumbles the ball. It's loose. There's a flag comes out. It looks like Ball State has recovered the ball. And there is a flag on the play. May have a face mask on Ball State here. Nope, the recovery was on Korama, who picks up the football. This could be a hold on Nebraska, and Ball Holding State may have. On the offense, number 68. Their third the turnover climb. of the game. Ball State, first down. And what, what a big turn of events with that one play right there. Keller, in the middle of the pocket, you see the blitz come off the edge. Gets one arm in there and knocks the ball out. Ball State jumps on it. And just when Nebraska had a nice drive going off of Sam Keller's front side and as he's getting ready to throw, they get to him. And man, Nebraska had Ball State on their heels there on that drive, Greg. Just a second over 10 minutes left of this game. Fumble on the snap. It's loose on the turf. As they lined up Dante Love in the backfield. I think Ball State got back on it, but wow, I think if I have Nate Davis playing quarterback, I think I put him at quarterback every every, every single play, don't you? You know, up 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 nine points this point of the game. I'm not sure this is the time to be cute offensively. I Ball make State. sure we maintain possession and work the clock, if nothing else, up two scores. And loves hurt. Looks like Love, as he dove onto the ball, there could have been a Nebraska defender that that dove onto him. Looks like it might be a lower lower leg injury, maybe his lower left leg. Let's see where the snap comes up. Uh, he just Good missed. Snap. Yeah, he just missed the snap. Let's look at his lower leg area. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Somebody fell right on top of him. Give him credit because after he took the blow, he still stuck out his right arm to grab the ball and pull it in. 37-28. Ball stay with the lead. Fourth quarter. Here in Lincoln. to Lincoln, Nebraska, 37-28, Ball State with the lead. They have scored 27 points here in the second half. They only had 10 at the half. It was 14-10 at intermission, but the Cardinal offense has been alive here in the second half with uh, Nate Davis putting on a show in front of a big red crowd of 84,000-plus here today. Dante Love. We'll see if he'll be able to come back into the game. He was injured on the last play, and he's been huge for Ball State today. Over 200 yards receiving alone by himself. Nate Davis back in the quarterback spot this play. He has time. Throws it down the middle. Overthrows it. It's picked off. Picked off by Bo Rue to the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. The Huskers get a huge defensive score. Has there been a bigger play than this made by a defender for Nebraska in recent games? If ever you needed a lift, it was right now. It's seven points back the other way. 
What a play by Bo Rude. And a throw that you won't normally see Nate Davis make. Off of his back foot, he just threw it up in the air. Only one pick on the season until that throw right there and what was a gem of a game by Nate Davis. Just a blemish on that one. The point after spins through to make it a two-point game, 37-35. The Huskers with a huge defensive score. Down nine, now they're only down two with 9.21 left. Nate Davis just shaking his head over on the sidelines. A little youth, he hasn't made mistakes today. He doesn't make many ever. Bo Rude just sitting in a zone. Ball was overthrown. Rude about dropped it. Was able to get it back and use that speed. And when you have just offensive linemen chasing you to the corner, Nate Davis, the only other guy that could have possibly gotten there. Senior, captain, first team all big 12 last year, Bo Rude with a huge play. We talked a few minutes ago about Nebraska being down two scores. At some point in time, they were going to need the defense to get a stop. Well, they did better than that. They got the stop and points off of that drive. Well, Ball State has been lethal offensively in the second half with four touchdowns against the Blackshirt defense. Nate Davis with the first one rushing up the middle and a long run by McQuail Lewis. Up the sideline, back across the middle of the field, just slicing through Nebraska's defense for another score. And of course, the deep pass to Dante Love. The throw by Nate Davis over the top of two defenders for the touchdown. And then finally, the last one, wide open. Corner of the end zone. Nate Davis with another touchdown pass. But let's see how Ball State responds now, Greg. A team that you can't say they have enough experience to know how to come in here and win. It seems like they've been playing with a lot of confidence, but right now, big momentum shift. And Dante Love back out there. He le was limped off a few moments ago, but he is back for this kick return here for Ball State. 9.21 left. Cardinals with a two-point lead over the Huskers. Kunalik to kick it away. He will be kicking into a south breeze here today. End over end kick. Love at the three. To the 20. Up to the 29 yard line. That's where Ball State will have it. Now we'll see how the young quarterback Nate Davis can he shake off a, a bad mistake. Overthrown ball in the middle of the field. That was a pick six for Nebraska. Not only did it give Nebraska's players a charge, but it got this crowd back into the game. A crowd that was pretty disappointed about five minutes ago. And right now, they're all standing, and they're all excited, trying to get another three and out for this defense. Davis rolls the pocket. Now may tuck and run. He's got a first down and a lot more. Davis to midfield. Shoved out of bounds with the 41, and it's going to be a late hit on Nebraska. Oh, boy, Andre Jones. He got a stiff arm from Nate Davis. He didn't like it. Threw him down once he was out of bounds, and that's going to add 15 yards to the end of the run. Well, I think once we see this, the shove's probably going to come after Davis gets his feet on the white lines, which you just don't do that in front of the other after team's the bench. Play. Personal foul. Unless they rock the center bounds of the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Boy, that puts Ball State right back into business. You'll see how Nebraska, their defense drops into coverage. They brought one person on the on the blitz, looked like Phillip Dillard. And once Nate Davis got through the line, there was nobody there. He used his speed to get to the edge. He tries to stiff arm to the face of Andre Jones, and he does give him a shove. I know it doesn't look like much, but look, stiff arm to the face, but it, there was a shove after he was out of bounds, right there. The, the last extra shove, and with the benches being there, that's an easy call for the officials. One that I know the crowd doesn't like. That's just a touchy situation. It could have gone either way. First and 10, Cardinals and the Husker 26. It's Lewis around the left side. He gets about six on first down before stepping out at the 20. Ball carried by number 30. And boy, does Nebraska miss Zach Bowman here today. We told you early on that he's out with a tweaked hamstring, not even dressed for the game. 
So Andre Jones getting a lot of time in that corner spot and Ball State has picked on him throughout the game. Well, he's been beat deep twice today where the ball was dropped by Dante Love. Imagine the day Love would have had without those three drops, Greg. Second and four for the Cardinals at the Nebraska 28-58 left. Ball State by two. Hand off to Lewis. Stutter steps, cuts back. First down to the 10. Inside the 10, down to the 5. It'll be first and goal, Ball State. Larry Asante with a tackle for Nebraska, but Lewis showing good ability to cut and cut back against the grain. Picks up a nice gain inside the 10. And Lewis is hurt. See what happened at the end of the play. It was just a little draw. A little delay draw up the middle to Lewis. Able to pick his way. Nice patience by the running back. Once he broke into the secondary, you see the, the athleticism these guys have. Ball State at all the skilled positions. They're able to make plays, and when they've gotten into space, they've done something with the ball. Cutting back across the grain, makes another nice cut right there. Oh, and you might have seen his right knee. This you is might be able to see his right knee when he makes that last cut, right on this step right here, right there. He, he never puts that foot down again. Kind of hyperextends it. Might have seen a hyperextension yeah. of the right knee. You know, he had his last year, which was his freshman year, cut short Matt with a shoulder injury. So now he's maybe working on a knee injury. He played very well against Navy last week. He had 167 yards rushing to McQuayle Lewis last week, and you can see now 122 in this game. But this is a dangerous team. When you have playmakers at the wide receiver spot, the quarterback spot, and the running back spot, you can be tough for defenses. And boy, Nebraska's finding that out today. And maybe the one area that there was a question mark was the offensive line of Ball State. And if there's one area that they can really match up with Nebraska, it might be Nebraska's front four against that offensive line. So Nebraska really not able to exploit a young, inexperienced offensive line of Ball State. They roll out their quarterback. They have playmakers at the skilled positions. They've been able to exploit Nebraska's defense all day long, approaching 600 yards of offense. First and goal, Cardinals at the six. Edmonds, the tailback. He gets the pitch, trying to ground the right side. Has some blocking out there and gets run down at the five. Hit by Phillip Dillard there. What a big stand here for the Black Shirts, who really need to hold Ball State to a field goal. A touchdown again makes it a two-score game. So this is a huge part of this football game with 8.20 left. Sure is. This is a big, big defensive stop. And you're going to see Brian Wilson come up from the safety position right there. And he comes up and blows up the play. Cardinals' last victory of a ranked team six years ago when they beat Toledo out of their own league. Edmonds remains a tailback, but Lewis out injured. It's second and goal. They keep the ball at the six. Again, they go to Edmonds, left side. He gets hit at the five and spun down. And Philip Dillard is gaining some playing time today. Let me tell you, he has made some big plays. If he isn't there to stop the running back on this play, he goes all the way. And you'll see Philip Dillard. Watch him go with the flow here, come up and boom, pad level and drive through the tackle and stop him on a dime right at the five yard line. Third and goal. Midway through the fourth quarter, Ball State by two. Nate Davis under center, fakes the pitch, rolls out, trying to elude the rush. Clear back near the 30 yard line is Davis. Now throws it down the field into the end zone, tipped away by Andre Jones. It'll be fourth and goal. And Ball State will need to try a field goal. There is an injured Husker down. Looks like it's Barry Turner that is down around the seven yard line. And give Zach Potter credit because they faked the toss sweep like they've run the last three plays. He stayed at home, played responsibility football there. Chases down Nate Davis and didn't overrun the play. There were two times there he could have overrun the play. Instead he doesn't and really a silly throw by Nate Davis. Ooh. As good a game as he has played today, boy. If that would have been picked, he'd have wanted it back. Well, Andre Jones knocks it away. Now they're going to force a field goal. Kind of wonder about Nate right now. Remember, really, one of the last throws he made was the pick six to Rude. They could, right. He had the big scramble and the and the 15-yard personal foul really moved the ball down into the scoring zone here. And their play selection at first and goal, the six was run, run, and then kind of a mm -hmm. rollout scramble. And they're attending to Barry Turner down on the field. This is a 
a moment to be a little nervous about if you're a Husker fan here. Another defensive lineman where Nebraska is probably the most thin in the entire team. Position you can't afford to have another guy go down. He's going off. At least he's, he can walk off. Hate to guess what it might be, but hopefully he's able to come back. Well, this will be a little more than a, a PAT attempt here. Now, remember, Jake Hogue just missed a point after attempt a moment ago. This is going to be a 22-yard field goal attempt. He is four for four this year from this distance. And it's from the hash, which gets you know, a little bit of a tough angle when it's this close. They're waiting for Turner to get off the field before they can have the snap here. 7.09 left of the game. Ball State by two, trying to stretch the lead to five. And watch the big rush off of this side from Nebraska. They're going to push hard down off that right side because of the angle the kicker has to take. Snap down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Jake Hogue does convert three more points on the board. But Nebraska only down by five. A touchdown will put the Huskers back in front. Get set for a heck of a finish here in Lincoln. Cardinals by five. Back to Lincoln, 40-35, Ball State with the lead. They get points there, Matt, but that was key for the defense not to give up a touchdown because now the offense can go get the lead back. Right, only a five-point game is first and goal at the five-yard line. And after Nate Davis threw that last interception, you wonder if young sophomore quarterback, do you want to put him in a position to, to make a bad throw? And he did on third down there. They got away with it. They were able to get the field goal, but still just a one-possession game. So a good defensive stand inside the five-yard line for Nebraska. Now key for the Husker offense to come down and try to reclaim the lead here as we get deep into this fourth quarter. What a game, though. Ball State, Nebraska, 40-35 is our score in this game. And the Huskers have certainly been tested in this game. We thought we'd see good quarterback play. We've seen great quarterback play in this game. Yeah, from both guys. Nate Davis has, has thrown an interception. Um, Sam Keller has had a fumble. But together, these two guys, over 700 yards passing. So, yeah, we've seen two prolific passers here today. And Sam Keller also threw a pick as well, but he has a chance now to lead his team back down the field and take the lead back. Andre Jones gets the kick, gets to the 15, and will be surrounded at about the 18-yard line. So that's where the Huskers will have it, 6.58 left in this game. You love offense. You have this one. This might be a Christmas present game for you to see this thing. Over 1,000 yards. Ooh. These two teams over a thousand yards. Nebraska averaging 7.3 yards per snap, and Ball State 8.3 yards per snap. Every single play over eight yards for Ball State today, on average. Lucky the eye back. Keller under center, none in motion. Play action fake. They find Lucky to the slip screen. Lucky to the 30, picking his way down the field. What a play. Flag comes out. Lucky tackle to the 49. Might have a clip or a block in the back. So part of this will come back. Not all of it, but part of it will. B.J. Hill finally corrals Lucky. I like the play call. That was well executed. You have to think Ball State might come with some pressure there, and they did. Sam Keller was able to dump it right over the top of the defense, and a good job by Marlon Lucky once he got into space, having patience once again, picking his way through the secondary for a big game. Holding. On the offense, number 68, 10-yard penalty, still first down. It's on Keith Williams, a redshirt freshman, getting some today as the Huskers have changed some personnel up front with the injury to Andy Christensen. And you'll see Keith Williams 
coming down the middle of the field right there. It's like he ooh. kind of put his arms around him. Yeah, he kind of pulled him down a little bit. That's tough because you love when a lineman gets downfield. He was probably 25 yards downfield there trying to make a play. So you love the effort, but you just have to finish the play right, not pull the man to the ground. It was enough for a first down, so it's first and 10 from the 28. Remember, they had the ball just inside the 18. Back, pass out a flat caught, but immediately planted as lucky by Eddie Burke. So it will be second down and 10 for Nebraska. 6-25 left in the game. Ball State 40, Nebraska 35. Sam Te Keller takes a big shot here up the middle. And when he lets it go, then Marlon Lucky takes a big shot. So this defense from Ball State laying some licks right now. Mike Huff in at the right guard spot now for the Husker offense. Second and ten. Six minutes left in the game. Four wideouts in the pattern. Keller back, guns, caught. Peterson first down at the 41. Nice grab by Todd Peterson and able to get a toe down. Good work knowing where you are on the football field. Todd Peterson's come up with some big catches in his career at the end of games. And Sam Keller finds him here right over the top of the defender. It's both feet in. Oh. Just need one in college, but he got them both. That would have worked tomorrow. Ball to 41 for Nebraska. 5.54 left. Ball State by five. Got to keep it on the play clock here. They break the huddle. There's five on the play clock. Keller. Gets the snap off in time. Comes pressure. Throws it down the middle of the field. Pass caught by Hill. Gets banged to the 30. Hangs on to it. Nice catch by Sean Hill. Brian Haynes makes the tackle. What a terrific throw and catch by Keller and Hill. And a good job picking up the blitz. Marlon Lucky stepped up in the pocket. Took out the, the blitz man right there. Just gives him enough time. Sam Keller throws a strike. And Sean Hill, right between two defenders, looks similar to the catch against Wake Forest. Let's see if he pushes off here at the right arm. Ooh. We saw it earlier for Ball State with a push off, so Sean Hill with a nice catch down the middle of the field. 32-yard pickup, ball to Ball State, 27. Lucky gets pinballed around and finally shoved down after a gain of a yard. Drew Duffin there to make the Cardinal tackle. 40, 35, Cardinals with the lead. Coming up on the five minute mark of this game. You made a comment early third quarter, I think, Matt. You thought this might be one of those games where the team with the ball last might win. Looking more like that all the time. Nebraska with a bunch formation to the right side. Keller back, finds Lucky, that little slip screen again. Lucky gets knocked down to the 19, a gain of about seven. It'll be third and two. Bryant Haynes makes a tackle on Marta Lucky, who makes his 11th catch of the game. 11 catches, 20 rushes. Sam Keller now over 400 yards passing, breaking his record from last week. A couple of touchdowns. Big third down right here. You don't want to go to fourth down. And give the ball back to Ball State and hope to get a stop. A lot of options on third and two. They go with a toss sweep to Lucky, but Ball State's there, but Lucky falls forward for the first down. The Cardinals looked like they were going to corral Lucky at the 20, but Marlin spun and dives forward, gets three yards enough to move the chains. Doesn't look like a lot on the stat sheet, but what a smart play by a running back that knows where he is on the field. You know you need just two yards to get a first down late in the game like this. Little spin move and dive forward. Second effort gets down there for a first down. A new set of downs for this offense in the red zone. Keller in the shotgun with the snap over the middle. Gets Halu. Halu to the near the 10. Knocked down there. It's a gain of about five. It'll be second and five. Clock on the roll, 3.45 left in the game. Ball State by five. Now the clock running is probably a good thing for Nebraska. Obviously thinking touchdown to take the lead. You don't want to leave too much time on the clock for Nate Davis. There's a look at your timeouts. Ball State with all three left. Nebraska has called one. Halu remains in the backfield. Keller back. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up. They find Purify. He has a touchdown. Nebraska has the lead. He 
easy throw and catch. And Sam Keller looking more and more comfortable all the time. He's delivered the ball with effectiveness all day long. Maurice purified with just a little shallow crossing route. Keller led him perfectly. Easy stroll into the end zone. You like those, no stress. Nebraska will go for two here. To try to make it a three-point game. Making it a two-point game does nothing for you, really. Right. So go for two. And this could end up being a, a really, really big play. Got her in the shotgun. Trips to the near side. Timeout called, I believe, by Ball State. So the Cardinals want to talk about this key two-point conversion here with 3.13 left. 41-40, Nebraska by a point as Brady Hoke wants to talk it over with his defense. Sam Keller, though, third touchdown pass of the game has put Nebraska in front. Pretty impressive stats for Sam Keller today and couldn't have thrown that one any better. How about 29 of 37, 438 and three scores. It's nice having a big body like Maurice Purify. When he's going across the middle as a quarterback, you stand back there. You know you can throw it in a pretty nice window, and he's going to make the play. There's a look at the scoring drive. That's impressive. 82 yards, nine plays, 345 off the clock. And they had to convert a couple of third downs on that drive to keep it alive and go back to Marlon Lucky, who was hit short of the first down when they had the ball to 20, diving forward to keep this drive alive for the Huskers. So here we go. Two-point conversion try for Nebraska, trying to stretch their lead to three. Purifies one on one on the top of the screen. You could see a stop route at the top. Keller looking to the near side. Down the middle. Peterson makes a catch. He's out of bounds. So the try fails. And the difference in score is Nebraska by a point with 313 left. Peterson makes the catch. Must have had a toe on the end line, Greg. Hard to tell from this angle, but the official was right on top of it. He was in good position. Keller can't believe it. Threw another good ball. So now, Ball State just needs a field goal. And they got a field goal last week against Navy to win an overtime, 34-31. And they have plenty of time left on the clock with 313. They have the wind at their pack. And they have two timeouts. Which could be big for the kickoff here. Nebraska can force Ball State to start at the 20 or inside of their 20. That's a long way to go, even for a field goal. 41-40 Nebraska. They trailed at one point in this game by nine, 37-28. That was early in the fourth quarter. They got a defensive touchdown from Bo Rude. And then that throw from Keller to Purify to jump back in front in this game. It's been a heck of a college football game here in Lincoln. Dante Love is back deep. He will corral it near the five. Love up the field, gets hit and knocked out of the 22. Good tackle for the Nebraska special teams. Carmack makes a nice tackle. Forty-one forty. Nebraska trying to hang on here against an unranked Ball State team. Nebraska's only lost three times since 1962 against unranked non-conference opponents here at home. Wow. Southern Miss in 04, Washington State in 77, the Air Force in 63. How about that? Kevin Cosgrove's defense going to be asked to put the stop on this Ball State offense. Edmonds on a toss sweep. Gets about three on first down. Potter and Sue make the Husker tackle. We haven't seen McQuail Lewis since he went down on the last drive. A little toss sweep. We've seen this play numerous times today. Potter comes off the block. That's what you didn't see Nebraska defenders do last week against USC was get off the blocks and be able to come up and make a play. Second and seven from the 25. Nebraska now with the nickel defense in there, only three defensive linemen. And then the stand-up guy at the bottom of the bottom four there is Octavian. 
Davis with time, lobs a pass. Edmonds makes the catch, and it's a first down to the 34. That was a reminiscent of the throw that Davis made that overshot the intended receiver that Bo Root took back for six. Risky little pass, little floater. Edwards was able, was able to pull it in. Slips through the defense. We've seen both quarterbacks do a good job of checking down today, finding that open man underneath. Clock becoming a factor. We're approaching two minutes left in the game. Cardinals still have two timeouts left. Nebraska by one. Davis on the shotgun. Gets the snap. Over the middle, pass is caught by Love. Short gain of about five. Clock still rolling. Rude and Murillo make the Husker tackle. Two timeouts left for Ball State. Remember, they used one before that two-point conversion. There's Jake Hogue, who this game could be decided by his right foot. Clock moving. I'm surprised Ball State's not hurrying things up a little here. This game might have already been decided by Hogue's foot if that extra point ends up being the difference for Ball State. Steps up, throws. Pass caught. Near a first down is Everett, but I think he's about a half yard shot, and the clock's still moving with a minute 13 left. I think it's going to be third down, and now Brady Hoke is going to call a timeout. That will leave Ball State with one. Well, that one point is huge, although Nebraska opted not to kick their PAT that time, which they could have to go up by one. Would have put them up by one, sure. Yeah. Sam Keller has a school record in passing yards today. You mentioned he's over 400, 438 yards, three touchdowns in the day. Betters the mark of Zach Taylor from a, two years ago against Iowa State. Well, what a job by Brady Hoke and his Ball State Cardinals today. He's going to be proud of his football team, although right now he's trying to win this game. Kevin Cosgrove's defense trying to stop Ball State here on third and one. From their own 43. Watch the play action and up top. Davis keeps it as the first down across the 45. That'll stop the clock. Again, Ball State down to one timeout left. Got to think they got to go no huddle here now. Yeah, two timeouts left. I mean, you still have some time. Obviously, the clock, clock stops in college football on a first down. Nebraska right now with their nickel formation on defense. Davis back, throws a short one to Edmonds. He's hit and dropped. A gain of about six in the play. Bo Roon makes a tackle. 50 seconds left in this game. Once again, though, a nice open field tackle by a Nebraska defender. Something that was lost last, last week against USC. Ball State up to the line of scrimmage. Davis throws it out a flat, and is that held on? Yes. That's uh, Darius Hill, the tight end, with a terrific catch of the 43, and he gets out of bounds. It's enough for a first down. 36 seconds left, and a new set of downs for the Cardinals. What a catch. Watch this fingertip catch right there. Whew. Caught the back half of the ball, got out of bounds, like you said. No, he didn't get out of bounds. They're starting the clock. 30 seconds left in the game. Davis back out the flat, pass caught, stepping out of bounds is Dan Dunford. It's not enough for a first down, but it does stop the clock with 27 seconds left at the Nebraska 38, a gain of five. Really working those edges, the outside fourth of the field there for Ball State to the short side of the field. That makes it a shorter throw for Nate Davis. The receiver's just running really short routes. The Nebraska corners giving a little cushion on these wide receivers. Watch for something down the middle of the field. After they work the edges, work the edges. Look for something up top. Second and five, Nebraska showing blitz. Davis gets the snap. Sets, guns, pass in and out of the hands. Oh, that's a big drop by Love. Would have been six points. Wow, what a strike throw by Nate Davis. And we've talked about Love, and we've given him a lot of that today. 10 catches, 214 yards, but that's his fourth drop as well. Sun in his eyes again. That's not the sun. <laughs> That's, uh, oops, it went right through my hands. Oh. It doesn't get any better than that. I think I might have hit him in the face mask. Oh. Third and five for Ball State, 22 seconds left. Cardinals have one timeout left. 
They're not yet in field goal range. Davis gets the snap. Lobs a pass downfield. The pass is tipped away and completely be put down. Steve Octavian with a huge defensive play for Nebraska. What a play by Steve Octavian. Looked like it was going to be a catch for, was that Hill? Running down the middle of the field. The tight end position. Look at Octavian. Look back for the football. That's one thing that'll just drive you. They're going to try a field goal here. Are you kidding me? This is going to be a 55-yard attempt. Now, Pope made a 45-yarder earlier, but instead of going for it on fourth and five, Ball State is going to try a field goal here with 17 seconds left. And a timeout taken by Nebraska. His college high is 45. He had a 49-yarder in high school. But at the college level for this redshirt freshman, his career long came today. Now he beat Navy a week ago in overtime with a 24-yard kick against Navy. Now he has a chance at back-to-back -back weeks to win a game. This is a little different kick. You go through 140 snaps in a football game. You have over 1,000 yards of offense between two teams. And it all comes down to number 29 for Ball State. And can he kick a 55-yard field goal? Now, Nebraska just called timeout because they're trying to get their kick blocking team in there. You'll see a big surge up the middle from Nebraska. They've been known to block kicks like this in the Bill Callahan era. It's going to have to be a low liner. Another timeout taken by Nebraska. Wind will be at his back, so he will have that. And it's not a big win. I would say 10 to 12 miles per hour. His 45-yarder, it looked like he had enough distance from here. But, boy, Husker's doing the right thing, trying to freeze him a little bit. Yeah, freeze him a little bit. He's on the road. I mean, it's a big, big kick. Now, we see Nebraska's only lost three games since 1962 to unranked opponents in this place. So, big kick for Hope. And uh, 55 yards, obviously, he's going to have to kick a low liner. I don't think he can get it, you know, too high and still carry it 55 yards. So Nebraska's going to get a big surge up the middle and try to block this thing. If Hogue can get it off, if he can kick it that far, let's see if he can even get it past Nebraska and their block. Right. This game comes down to this. 55-yard attempt for the win for Ball State. 17 seconds left in the game. A slight breeze in his back. Snap is down. The kick is up. The kick is no good. And Nebraska's going to survive an upset bid today from the Ball State Cardinals. As Jake Hoke's kick really never had a chance. It was wide left from the start. Looked like a high snap, too, Greg. So the ball got down just a little bit late. Hoke hooked it left. Just like a little four iron. You try to get a little too much on it, and you always end up pulling it. That's what he did there. Got over the top of the ball and pulled it to the left. Interesting decision by Brady Hoke to not go for it. I mean, this is a 55-yard kick, so long ways out there. Your offense has been so good throughout the day today to not try to get it a little bit closer and run a couple more plays. And use your timeouts. I mean, he, he could have used the timeout and saved some clock. Although, remember the drop by Love, too, yeah. on second down. Right. Then they go on third down and, and get a great play by Octavian. And Nebraska holds on for one point win here against the Ball State team that has to be ultra disappointed after the performance they put on today. 41 40 the final. Nebraska hangs on to win it. <coughs> Scary game, fun game to watch. Now, the, a lot of Husker fans are certainly going to be, I think, disappointed in the defense. But Ball State's has some playmakers, and they were very impressive in this game here today. Well, for sure. I mean, you have a quarterback like Nate Davis. We talked about this before the game started. You give him some playmakers and give him time, and he's going to pick you apart. I give a lot of credit to the Ball State offensive attack and Stan Parrish, his offensive, the offensive coordinator for Ball State. He was able to come up with a scheme and give Nate Davis time to throw the ball. They rolled him out a lot today. They gave him time to find those guys down the field. Dante Love had a big game. But he had some big drops, none bigger than the second down play that would have either been a touchdown or for sure put them in field goal range on the last on the last drive. But Nate Davis definitely put himself on the map today, Greg. He's a 
a really, really good quarterback and only a sophomore, 20 years old. I think some credit to Nebraska. They're down two scores in the fourth quarter. They didn't panic. They got the defensive touchdown from Rude. Then Sam Keller with that terrific 80-yard drive to get the lead back for Nebraska. Nebraska could have just said, hey, maybe not our day today, but they hung in there and got a win. It didn't look good. About a third of the way through the fourth quarter, but Bo Rude came up with a huge play and then give the ball back to Sam Keller, and he was able to lead him down for the win. 41-40, Nebraska with a victory here in Lincoln today. Who has the power to harness energy? The University of Nebraska Lincoln Research finds answers to global problems. With leading edge science, we explore renewable energy, reduce the impact of drought, conserve and protect our natural resources. It's clear the University of Nebraska-Lincoln helps keep the planet green. Now that's the power of red. This is Nebraska. The home of champions. The nation's finest student athletes. Success in athletics, academics, and life. Nebraska, the power of red. We are on a journey of discovery. A journey that is unlocking the secrets of disease at the genetic level. The result? Revolutionary cancer vaccines and research breakthroughs in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And with every discovery, we provide new knowledge to thousands patient at a time. We've always been pioneers. It's the frontiers that have changed. Nebraska survives an upset bid from Ball State winning 41 to 40. Stacy is downstairs with the victorious head coach. Thanks, Greg. You know, Coach, when you look back at that final drive with Hill and Purify, what does that say about the character of this team, especially they did it when it had to be done? Well, you know, I, it speaks volumes, first off. The resiliency of our players to come back from behind four or five times and to answer their scores, I thought showed tremendous poise. We got some questions on defense that we got to get answered, but I'm really proud of the players and the way they hung in there. It could have gone the other way, certainly, but the way we fought, I'm really proud of it. You start conference play next week. What are some positives you take from this game? Well, first off, the ability to, to uh, come back from behind. I think anytime you're in a conference conference player and co conference competition, your ability to come back from behind and win, especially in the fourth quarter, is huge. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. All right, Greg, back to you guys. All right, Stacy, thank you. Uh, Bill Callahan, I think probably fairly relieved to get out of here with a victory because Ball State gave them fits all day long. Yeah, for sure. Offensively, Ball State was very impressive. Nebraska's defense wasn't able to stop him over 600 yards for this Ball State offense today. Speaking of another impressive guy, Sam Keller with a school record 438 yards passing today. He's standing by with Stacy. Talk about how you have improved just in the course of the last few weeks and especially you were tested today. Well, you just try to keep getting better every week of practice and every game, every quarter that's gone by, I felt more comfortable operating uh, Coach Callahan's offense. and. And when you have guys that make plays, it makes it really easy, or a lot easier. And so I just feel good about where I'm at. Those guys are a heck of a team. They <laughs> battled hard. Nate Davis is a player. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just really happy we won and uh, just feel pretty good right now, that's all. I was going to ask you that because your demeanor seems very reserved. Are you just kind of in shock right now? Well, we got a lot of things to improve on. Uh, offense, the turnover's got to stop, and the defense, I'm sure they'll find things they want to improve on. It's a victory. Yes, it was a late drive, yes, but... We got some things to clean up before Big 12 starts. And good luck in the Big 12. Thank you very much. All right, guys. All right, Stacey, good job down on the sideline today. Survive and move on for the Huskers. Big 12 play starts next week with Iowa State, and it'll be interesting to follow this Ball State team as their season unfolds. This is a team with a lot of weapons, and they're going to win a lot of football games. That's right, Big 12 next week. And for Nebraska's defense, you have to go back to the drawing board and say, what do we need to do differently? differently because right now just getting sliced and diced by offenses. Nebraska's offense has been good though, however. Nebraska now three and one, Ball State two and two. My thanks to producer Tim Paps, to director Tom Williamson, to sideline reporter Stacy Patz, and to Matt Davison. Final score in Lincoln today, Nebraska 41, Ball State 40. Greg Sharp saying good day from Lincoln, Nebraska.